Peace, 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 family. What's good? What's good? What's good? Family, we are here once again. The SVDL playoffs, semi conference final round. We got Mikhail in the building along with Claim Your Inheritance. When you come in the building, hit the like button, hit the like button. When you come in the building, man, this is the Solar Vision Debate League playoffs, man. And guess who's in the building? We got Dude, the Knowledge Radio is in the building, along with School of Understanding. They will be the judges for tonight's debate. And tonight's topic is, is the 12 trials chart, according to REI, legit? All right, so Mikael is in the building, along with Claim Your Inheritance. And we're going to be getting it in, family just to let you guys know that we will be rocking out tomorrow with a non-playoff debate. Uh, it's going to be Yara Ben Nazareth. He's going to be going up against Jamra Yao. So make sure you be in the building for that. I just actually set up a debate between G Khan and Yasha and Brother Yashar for Friday. Um, and on Thursday, we're going to have um, Twa Boss. Yeah, Twa Boss is going to be in the building. He's going to be going up against Gideon Israel. So that will be a playoff debate, family. But tonight, tonight, we got Mikael in the building. We got Claim Your Inheritance in the building. Is the 12 tribes chart, according to REI, legit? So let's introduce the debaters for tonight. Mikael, what's good with your family? Hey, shalom, uh, brother Solar. Shalom, shalom to the whole Solar Vision Debate League. Peace to the judges. Peace, to, grace, and peace to everybody in the chat, man. That's watching. I like to give all honor and praises to the Most High Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the name of His Son Jesus Christ, our Mashiach. And um, this debate, I just like to say to everybody, I know, I know the twelve tribes is something that a lot of brothers and sisters hold dear to them. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've been looking at the chart and I've been around, I'm personal friends with even a lot of brothers who subscribe to the chart and, uh, people wonder why I've never really debated the issue or nothing like that, because I took a good look at it for some years before I decided to actually critique it in any type of way. And therefore I was really hoping that one day I would be able to actually sit down and have a dialogue with some brothers that I've built the relationship with. To where it would be real civilized you know what i'm saying and um the people would be able to learn from it it wouldn't be no mud slinging or people feeling like they you know beliefs getting pooped on but fortunately uh i believe the most high has presented me with that brother and that's the brother claim you know what i'm saying i've, I've been knowing him for a while and so uh i think this would be a good uh informational for those who understand the scriptures believe the scriptures in history and things of that nature, I will make my um my argument that in order for it to be legit, it must be a hundred percent accurate. And um, I'm going to show that my reasons that I don't think we should be subscribing to a chart. I'm gonna bring that. So that uh, I say shalom, peace. All right, all right, all right. Peace, family. Peace, peace, peace. To Mikael, claim your inheritance. What's good with your family? You there, Clay? He real low. Um, yeah. Um, we gotta get closer to the mic or uh, turn your mic up, brother, because we can't hear you. Okay, is that better? Uh, hello. Yeah, bro. We hear you now. Okay, so yeah, the, so the chart's been around since the nineteen uh, sixties. And so um, it ain't going nowhere. I'm, I'm just another uh, brother that came along and learned the information well enough to uh, uh, present it. And uh, hopefully uh, we can get through this without no no type of muscling. And like he said, and I know Mikael, he's uh, he he has decorum, so that won't be that won't be an issue. Um, 
as far as the uh, information goes, uh, it it is accurate, uh, uh, pretty much a hundred percent. So uh, uh, everything ain't ain't. I don't like to use the word a hundred percent. I say ninety nine point nine percent or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna present the information, lay it out quite clear, quite flat, and uh, we can get into the details about it on the argument league. So uh, just listen. That's what I implore the audience to do tonight is to listen very carefully. All right. All right. So with that being said, we're going with a three judge format for tonight's debate. Um, each judge is worth one PowerPoint and 10 voting points. We got do the knowledge in the building. What's going on? Do the knowledge. Hey, peace all peace to the soul all vision the bay league peace to the family out there get them likes up man hit that super chat and share this epic video i think this one uh is going to be one everybody got their daggone black history month scholarship voices on today you understand what i'm saying but we still looking for uh, a good intellectual brawl right here uh with clear concise points and you know edification for the listeners so I'm ready. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, and we got School of Understanding in the building family. What's going on, School of Understanding? Shalom, shalom. Peace to all beings. And let's get ready to rumble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So um, once again, tonight's uh, topic is it's a 12 tribes chart according to Aria Legit. We got um you say what yeah, yeah, your mic, yeah, yeah, no, your mic was once you begin to talk or whatever adjustment you made, the mic is cool now, brother. So you're straight. Um so claim your inheritance is set to go first. We're gonna get right into this whole deal. We're gonna go ahead and set this timer for 10 minutes. And uh, brother, claim your inheritance. Whenever you're ready, brother, you can begin your opening. All right, New Jerusalem, the world's holiest government presents Ariaz 12 tribe chart is legit. Agreements. Malak Mikael ben Yisrael agrees original Israelites were black, thus Israelites perfect in their generations are black jeremiah 14 and 2 and it states judah mourneth the gates thereof language they are black unto the ground the cry of jerusalem is gone up amos 9 and 7 it reads are ye not as children of the easy opians unto me o children of israel so that's uh, explaining that the Most High knows who we are and we appear as the Ethiopians. So everybody knows that the Ethiopians are black people. Genesis 6, 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and Noah walked with God. So we uh, explained that as he had he kept the, his uh, his genealogy pure, uh, making him a black man. I, I personally view him as an albino black man. Revelations one fifteen and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters talking about the appearance of Christ. So. We know that the, the children of Israel are black people. And we agree to that. All right. Mikael agrees. Both the northern and southern kingdoms called Israel and Judah were originally black. Mikael agrees. Both kingdoms were once united under our king Saul, David, and Solomon. Mikael agrees the United Kingdom of Israel became two separate kingdoms under Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Mikael agrees the two separate kingdoms will become the United Kingdom of Israel again one day, according to Ezekiel 37 to 15. 
which reads the 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 word of the most high came again unto me saying moreover thou son of man take thee one stick and write upon it for judah and for the children of israel his companions take then take another stick and write upon it for joseph the stick of ephraim and for all the house of israel his companions and join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in thine hand and when the children of your people shall speak unto thee saying wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these say unto them thus saith the most high power behold i will take the stick of joseph which is in the land of in the hand of ephraim and the tribes of israel his fellows and will put them with him even with the stick of judah and make them one stick and they shall be one in mine hand in the hand of the most high power and the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before thy, their eyes and say unto them thus saith the most high power behold i will take the children of israel from among the heathen whether they have they be gone and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land and i will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of israel and one king shall be king to them all and they shall be no more two nations neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all so we agree on that part where uh they were divided into two nations and in the latter days uh before the return of christ uh we will become one nation again so uh it's important for us to gather uh these saints together you know what i mean we have to disseminate the information clearly and and get them uh invigorated to to uh join us in our efforts to build that nation that is prophesied to be Mikael agrees his he's a valuable member of the tribe of Judah living in America. Mikael agrees his ancestors are members of the tribe of Judah, tracing back to the fourth son of Jacob slash Israel. Mikael agrees the southern kingdom called Judah, who are his ancestors, were brought to the Americas via the transatlantic slave trade. So these are this is how we got here he agrees that uh the kingdom of judah came from africa you see all these arrows coming from africa to the americas so that's the southern kingdom he understands that very clearly mikhail agrees the numbers are approximate so whenever they uh disseminate the numbers for us they just round them to the nearest million people and stuff like that so that should not be an issue tonight the exact numbers mikhail agrees that the southern kingdom are in the americas known by the bywords black african-american negro colored nigger coon mulatto quadroon and octoroon mikhail agrees that the countless numbers of the northern kingdom are in the americas and are also known by the by words he disagrees that the northern kingdom are in the americas by the by words indian savages red indian indian native american and autogenous and indigenous description of u.s census classifications uh disagrees with him so we got native american here and they're called indian we got African American who are called Black Mulatto Quadroon and Octoroon. He knows that part, but he doesn't understand that our brothers are here as well in the Americas. Mikhail disagrees that members of the Northern Kingdom are identifiable according to Ariaz 12 tribe chart. In other words, he imagines that we cannot identify the Northern Kingdom in the Americas. But how? How does Mikael not know the Northern Kingdom came to the Americas when he agrees that the Southern Kingdom came to the Americas? How are the 12 tribes still lost in his mind? God forbid. 
He might trick you by saying they're not in the Americas, they're in Europe. But Ariel taught us that too. Second address, chapter 13, verse 40 through 47 says, those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Ohetsaya the king, whom Shalom Nessa, the kingdom of Syria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters and so came into they into their into another land but they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt that they might there keep their statutes which they never kept in their own land and they entered into euphrates by the narrow places of the river for the most high then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over for through that country there was a great way to go namely a year and a half and the same region is called Arsereth. then dwelt they there until the latter time and now when they shall begin to come the highest shall stay the springs of the stream again that they may go through therefore sawest thou the multitude with peace So they escaped this Assyrian captivity and went somewhere. I'll show where that is. Learning the basics of the Hebrew language is winning when exposing truths, facts, and realities of biblical prophecies that are flooded, obscured, and covered by liars, the insincere, and the unlearned. Arsereth means, uh, it's a compound word that from H731, Arza, Cedar, Wayne's Coding, and Theth, or Theth, which means terror. The terrifying cedars is the concept. The found 10 tribes of Israel. See, I know the Northern Kingdom came to the Americas. The 10 lost tribes are easy to identify in my mind. Hallelujah. Ariel's 12 tribe chart clears your mind about this topic. That's obvious. So these are the terrible cedars, the terrifying cedars uh, that they would have seen when they landed on the west coast of the American shores. Uh, these are the tallest trees in the world. This is what the northern kingdom saw when they landed on the west coast of what's known as America today. The sin of interracial dating is important Hi. to you. Hi. Mm -hmm. All right. Shout out to Claim your inheritance for dropping that size. We're going to hand this thing over now to Brother Mikhail. Brother Mikhail, set this timer for 10 minutes. Brother, whenever you're ready, you can begin your opening. I mean, your um, your opening, brother. I'll meet you, Mike. Mikhail. Unmute your mic, brother. Your mic is muted, Mikhail. If you hear me, and if you if you can't unmute your mic, you might want to drop out and come back in. All right. I don't know what's going on with Brother Mikhail right now. So uh let's see if I could call him again. Okay, he's trying to come back in. 
Yeah, I hope you ain't starting my time. My bad, everybody. Um, I went to try and screen share. You know, I still ain't got it down packed. So I went to screen share and it literally kicked me off. So I don't know. So all my stuff, my tabs I had pulled up here are gone. Uh, so, do you have um, your tabs up now? No, they all the ones I had pulled up are gone. I'm about to go back and try to find them and pull them all back up. Look, and, go, to the, uh, go to the top right corner. Go to history. Yeah. Yeah, I'm finna try that now. To look at my screen right here. The top right corner. Okay. You hit, you hit that and then you hit history. And then um it should be recently closed. One of these should have all your tabs in it. All right, let me see. Okay, hold on. Shoot. Yeah, he just dropped off again. With the, uh, shout out to the family. Uh, like I said, we're going to be rocking out all week. Um, we're going to have on Sunday, we're going to have uh, outside the cube. He's going to be in the building going up against Bishop Eliyahu, and their topic is, is homosexuality, is homosexuality um, and moral behavior. It's homosexuality and moral behavior. So they will be debating that this coming Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you be in the building for that family. Um, Mikael. Uh, yeah, can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, bro. You, you got two icons up now, so. I got two up? Yeah, yeah, you, um. Okay, all right, let me try to see if I could close. Yeah, man, it's just messing me all up. I apologize to the audience. I really don't know what I'm doing. That's why I usually just do it old school and freestylish, man. It's technology. I'm a dummy when it comes to that. Uh, I don't even know how to close that other one out. So, no, do you got your information up so you can share it? Yeah, I got I got my information up. I'm scared to share it, though. I'm scared it's going to kick me uh, off. Just go ahead and hit that, um, that green screen in the um, upper left-hand corner with the white arrow. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm about to. Let me see. Can y'all can, can see it? Did you hit the um arrow? Yeah, I hit the arrow. What what is it saying? Uh there you go. It got the, you see it? Okay. No, no, that's okay. clean. That's clean. Um no, that's me. No, did you hit the Tell arrow? Me. No, because I see your icon. I don't see um when you hit the arrow. And it starts showing a lot of screens. A lot of screens will pop up. Okay. I hit the arrow and now I see the screen. Okay. I see it. All right. So um hit share screen. Yeah, I hit share. Can y'all see it now? Yeah, we can see it now. What is it? Uh it's a it's a guy there with dreads. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, audience, I want y'all to hear this. Um, the brother came out, you know, uh, he said a couple of things that was a little bit off about me, but for the most part, he had it down pat. Um, <clears throat> but it's things, it's things like this, due to that you have elders in the Israelite community, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be more prone to knowing a little bit more of the history concerning these things. And as long as you have questionable Things like what y'all about to view um, with the brother elder who, who came up um, under the um, REI era, then it's gonna leave questions out there. So I just play this real quick. Want y'all listen close. There always were in those days um, intent on bowing to the gray hair. You know, it was like that's it. You know. They said we're now we're now going to hear from uh, our elder. 
and I would teach you. And he'd stand up there and he saw it talking and say, and, and I can prove it with that book you got right there in your hand. You know, and anyway, that was a great experience. I went up there a couple of times. And one time we were over there and they had the charts up and they had the charts they said if you're Jamaican you come from this tribe and if you're from uh, Barbados and that tribe and uh, read the book said hey come, come on Bob what is you know that ain't right he said of course Danny I know that's not right he said but that's the hook that's how we get them into place and we wire them up to what's true Shalom everyone, we're talking to Okay. Now um I don't know if y'all heard that clear. Did y'all hear that clear? Yeah, yeah, we heard it clear, bro. Okay, well basically, um y'all can check that out on y'all own. Um it's really not a secret, some of us know about it. But it's uh an elder and it's a couple of videos out there with brothers that came up with REI and um elders that came up, of course, um right after the Abba, uh, Abba Bibbins era. And they were saying that it was no secret that elders would say, you know, um, that that chart that Ari I put out there was more of a hook to get, you know, to get uh, to get the people in. And so, I mean, if they, if they making these statements, I mean, who am I to argue against it? Um, let me see how I close my screen now. Uh, okay. Another thing, another thing is this. So I want to go to the book because when you look at the 12 tribes chart, my issue never has been our Latinos, Israelites. Never made that argument before in my life because I know uh, Latinos are Israelites. And I hear a lot of brothers on the other end say, well, the Negro only Israelites are more racist than, than you know, than you say than we are. But in fact, the fact that there's a classification of Negro, Latino, and Native American has already caused problems. Being that we are the exact same people, why wouldn't we be under the exact same ethnic terminology or ethnic group? And then, you know, it's one thing that's, um, it's, one, it's, it's, it's one verse that you know, that I know is used quite often when it's, uh, when it's, topic comes up so let me find it real quick let me go to uh hosea chapter seven this is one that that, that my brothers that subscribe to the chart like to use a lot so you got hosea chapter seven and um let me see one second hosea chapter seven i apologize again y'all for the technical difficulties i'm gonna have to get that down packed man that 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 and I, I i really ain't been feeling too hot either so hosea chapter seven we're gonna pick it up hosea seven and verse eight and this is what is read all the time it says ephraim he hath mixed himself among the people and ephraim is a cake not turn so they will use that to say like with the puerto ricans if i'm not mistaken that um this is why a lot uh, and a lot of the latinos would look that way as far as the ones who look like Europeans, you know what I'm saying? Um, is because they mixed with the people. But indeed, when you just read Hosea, it tell you what that's talking about because the people that we mixed with during this time and Hosea was African, was Hamites, the Assyrians, the Egyptians, and people of that nature when we went back. So if you started from verse uh, one, it says, when I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered. And the wickedness of Samaria, for they have committed falsehood and thief and, and come in, and troop of robbers spoiled with them. So I'm a bag, I'm gonna um, skip down to verse four. It says, They are all adulterers as an oven heated by the baker, who ceaseth from raising after he have have kneaded the dough until it be leavened. So when they say, so when you'll hear somebody say, see, there's a cake unturned, meaning as though they're lighter skinned on one side or something like that. It's actually talking about their idolatry and their paganism. Because when they mix with these nations, these were dark nations. 
it was the idolatry and you and, and, and it further confirms it in this same chapter verse 6 for they have made ready their heart like an oven whilst they lie in wait their baker sleepeth all the night in the morning it burneth as a flaming fire they are all hot as an oven and have devoured with their judges all their kings have fallen there is none among them that call it unto me skip down to verse 11 Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart and they call to Egypt and go to Assyria. So this is what it's talking about when it said cake is on turn. It's not talking about people went from looking like Wesley Snipes to uh uh to Ricky Martin. You see what I'm saying? And I'm and I'm gonna also bring out the point later on that I'm not saying that all Israelites have to look the exact same way. We're talking about the general populations. So I'm gonna continue and let the book explain who the Israelites are. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 that we all like Deuteronomy 28 and 43. So if we go to Deuteronomy 28 and 43, it'll make it even clearer for us that the Israelites will be in a certain position wherever they scatter that. So it says Deuteronomy um, 28 uh, and verse 43. And hit, this is what it reads. It says, the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high and thou shall come down very low if you look at latin america the people that are down very low are the afro latinos who you don't seem to see ever like how often you may catch a dominican you may uh, uh you know uh, you may even catch a dark uh puerto rican but for the most part when you see the charts out there and people that represent them they're almost never the dark ones and you know why because the dark ones or the ones that are negro that's why it throws a whole wrench in the chart because if they're saying negroes are judah then that means that all those afro mexicans are not issachar but they're judah that means all the afro cubans are judah that means all the afro uh venezuelans are judah so not a whole chart just by default it's already not legit, but we're going to continue. As a matter of fact, let me see if I could pull this up real quick. That'll make it even better. Here we go. Okay. How racism persists in Latin America. Can y'all see this? No, hit the green it. arrow again. Okay. Uh, it's acting funky on me again. I don't want it to kick me out. Okay, well, let's see. Share. Here you go. Okay. Uh, can y'all see it? Yeah, we see it, brother. Okay, how racism persists in Latin American communities. Now, this go right along with Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43. And we are also going to read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 25. It says, since, uh, since January, the Teatro Trail in Little Havana has been showing the, this play. And this is a play that they was uh, that's in blackface. It's extremely racist. It says the visual, uh, I can't say that one, to sold out crowds. The Spanish language produced featured a blackface character. A fair skinned actress wore brown face makeup and overdrawn big red lips. The theater recently decided to eliminate blackface from the play after El Nuevo Herald uh, report denouncing it. Blackface was once popular in racist menstrual shows in the United States, but has since been regarded as racist. It's still performed regularly in Spanish language and entertainment. Afro Latinos in Miami say the play is a window into the racism that exists and persists in local Latin American communities. Uh, y'all can go on and continue to read all this on y'all own. Y'all get a chance. There's some good information on there. But the point and the argument that I'm making is, it's, it's definitely Israelites throughout all of Latin America. But another big problem I have with the chart is Brazil. Do people know that Brazil has the largest amount of quote unquote people from Africa outside of Africa, outside yeah. of Nigeria? It Ty. has the most black people, yet it's not on the chart. Ty. All right. All right. So um, shout out to both the beaters for the opening round. We're going to now go to the premise round, uh, which is 15 minutes. 
we want to go ahead and set this time up for 15 minutes to hand this thing over to claim your inheritance claim your heritage you got 15 minutes to state your premise family whenever you're ready you can begin brother okay i'm gonna clarify all those uh confusions that he has uh tonight and um uh, as far as that elder uh i don't think i know anybody who who's ever who knows him but uh uh if we are to take his word for it then that's a that's a good thing uh he said he says that it's incorrect and that's a hook or whatever you know what i mean but it's an important uh teaching tool and it is accurate so uh i'm gonna show you show you that tonight the sin of interracial dating uh deuteronomy 5 and 9 says thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them nor serve them for i the lord the, the most high your power am a jealous power visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me so in this case of uh, the sin that uh is uh visited to the third and fourth generation it is uh interracial dating neither shalt thou make marriages with them your daughter sh thou shalt not give unto his son nor his daughter shalt thou take unto your son so we're not supposed to uh do that but uh so that's why you have the uh uh for lack of a better word afro latinas uh, but they are just dark latinas because they kept the law and and don't interracially date so the lighter skinned latinas uh i'm gonna get into in just a moment if you continue to sin you hate uh your power and their grace and mercy will apply to your descendants if continued your bloodline becomes whited out and grace and mercy runs out a woman who produces a child by interracial dating instantly becomes another race according to how we keep tr track of races biblically uh which is by the father of the race in question a man dilutes his race when having children with another race deuteronomy 7 4 through 5 says for they will turn away your son from following me that they may serve other gods so will the anger of the most high be kindled against you and destroy you suddenly but thus shall ye deal with them ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire revelations eleven three five says and i will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the god of the earth and if any man will hurt them fire proceeds out of their mouth and devour their enemies and if any man will hurt them he must uh in this manner be killed so we know that the god of this earth is uh satan so interracial sin of uh, visited unto the third and fourth generations is also the confusion of faces so <clears throat> the people who don't interracially date are dark skin like like he knows so he accepts that the uh, latinas are israelites i'm gonna show how they got there okay so now you got uh since he doesn't know so the first generation the fathers uh you see they, they're black the mulattoes are considered black those are the sons the quadroon which is uh a, a, a uh, this man dating a, 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 a white woman and producing a, a child, okay, as a quadroon, and they are the third generation, that's the grandsons. The fourth generation is this man uh, dating a white woman and producing this child. Uh, the results may vary. That's an octoroon. That's the fourth generation. So the iniquities of them interracially dating all this time causes them to lighten lighten their skin tone and then that's how races are, are created different races are created okay so then you got the white is this man dating a white woman and producing a child that's the fifth generation and they are cut off for good so when the children of the iniquity of interracial dating become many in number, they're referred to as human races worldwide. Claim your inheritance. Daniel 9, 4 through 8 says, And I prayed unto the Most High my power and made 
my confession and said, O Mosai, the great and dreadful power, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled, even by departing from your precepts and from your judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto your servants, the prophets, which spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Most High, righteousness belongs unto you, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day, to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them, because they are trespassed that they have trespassed against thee, O Lord, to us belongs confusion of faith, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. So that's the sin of interracial dating. That's what happens. It creates uh, uh, new races, and it's a sin. So this is what you see whenever you see the new races. You see the daughters around the world looking like... Uh, the locals, wherever they are scattered to. You have the mothers who are very dark skinned. Then you have the mulattoes who are lighter and then so forth and so on. So just like uh, with the men, you see the same uh, situation where the women are the similar, similar complexions and, you know, results may vary, but they all uh, look similar. Uh, and you can kind of point them out as you look around or you can you can spot a Puerto Rican. You can spot a, a native uh, I indigenous person. You can you can spot all these different races very easily. It's because they mixed. Twelve tribes of Israel taught by Arya. You got Sirach 26, 19. Through 23. My son, keep your flower of your age sound. And give not your strength to strangers. That's interracial dating. When thou has gotten a fruitful possession through all the fields, sow it with your own seed, trusting in the goodness of your stock. So your race which you leave uh, shall be magnified, having the confidence of their good descent. A harlot shall be accounted as spit. But a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. But a godly woman is given to him that fears the most high. As we look around the world, we can easily identify Israelites. Ariel's 12 tribe chart focuses on the Americas and is an extremely good teaching tool for uh, zombie Israelites in the Americas. Amos 3 and 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? As we look around the world, we can easily identify Israelites. The chart can he defined attracted more unaware Israelites to their ancient nationality than any other teaching tool in existence. Ariel's 12 tribe chart focuses on the Americas and is a legit teaching tool for Israelites in the Americas. That's obvious. A premise. Okay, so now the definition of legit is you can look that up on your own time i don't have a whole lot of time but it's right here ruling by or based on the strict principle of hereditary right legit as in a legitimate king revelation 1 6 and it says and has made us kings and priests unto the unto power and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen revelation 5 10 says and has made us unto our power kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth second timothy three sixteen says all scripture is given by inspiration of, of power and is 
profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Being exactly as purposed, neither spurious nor false, a legitimate grievance, a legitimate practitioner, conforming to recognized principles or accepted rules and standards, a legitimate advertising expenditure. Deuteronomy 19.15, one witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sins at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. So that's what we, we're using. We're using varying witnesses throughout the text to prove this situation. Elder Ariel's own words. Make sure you can hear it clearly. American Indian. If you're going to deal with justice, about, wait, just a minute. If you're going to deal already, with justice, listen to what I'm going to say. Go ahead. If you're going to be a just people in a society, this land here really belongs to the so-called American Indian. <laughs> <laughs> That's justice. Now, if you're going to talk about Christ, you got to go back to the law of justice. The Bible says if you move another man's plot, move his, his uh, insignia from his plot, from his plot of land, that is wrong. And you have to pay for that. Reuben is a Seminole Indian. Gad is a North American Indian. Asher is a Brazilian Indian. Natalie is an Argentinian Indian. Uh, Issachar is a Mexican Indian. Those are the real tribes of Israel, according to the scriptures. Now, if the cameraman can come back to this, I'd like to focus on this. The real Jews are black, like this relief from the walls of the tombs of Egypt shows. See that? It clearly shows that they're black people. Now, the caption under this says, brick making by the Jews in Egypt. Now, this is in the back of a Bible. Through the Bible. Okay, so what we heard clearly is that Ariel stating that the uh, original and those perfect in the generations are bl are black. All right, and indigenous to this land. So, uh, what I'm going to show next is Zebulon, because he didn't mention that in that video. Panama. Panama is for a haven of ships. That's why the Panama Canal was through there. Everybody got that? Uh -huh. So from Guatemala to Panama, that whole strip of land going down to Panama, not just Panama, from Guatemala to Panama, is located the tribe who? Everybody got that? Not yeah. just the Panamanians. It goes from Guatemala. He said not just the Panamanians. So the, the the when when you call it a hook, right, it's is to get you to sit down and, and learn the details of the of the information. So he already said that the real Israelites are black. All right, so we agree on Judah, we agree on Benjamin, we agree on Levi. And now he agrees on the uh, Latinas. So I'm going to show how they got here later on in the debate. Agree disagreements about Arya's 12 tribe chart in Northern Kingdom. First to firmly establish the result of uh, Mikhail's resistance to this lesson. Now that I've uh, warned you twice, uh, let's move on with the lesson. This is what happens when you uh, resist this information. Okay, so you scattered the flock. So you look that up, and you'll see that you the the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, save the most high. So I implore you to uh gather the flock instead of scattering the flock away from this this lesson. 
So disagreements about Ariel's 12 tribe chart, prophecy explicitly reveals that all of Israel would be oppressed together in the days before the return of Emmanuel. Jeremiah 15, Jeremiah 50, 33. Thus said the Most High of armies, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. So you're going to see that the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom are oppressed together wherever they are scattered. So that would include the United States. <laughs> All right. So Bible uh, omission. Second Ezra 14, 1 through 6. And it came to pass upon the third day. I sat up under an oak and beheld there came a voice out of a bush over against me and said, Ezra, Ezra. And I said, here I am, Mosai, and I stood up upon my feet. Time, yeah. time, time. All right, we're going to keep this thing rolling. We're going to hand this thing over to Brother Mikael. Brother Mikael, you have 15 minutes. Whenever you're ready, you can begin. Yeah, baby. He didn't turn it up a notch. Love is coming off. Uh, I want y'all to pay close attention to what my dear brother claimed did. And I see that I see people do this a lot. He went to Daniel's chapter nine and verse seven. So let's read that together, because you actually you actually blew your own toe off, bro. This is Daniel chapter nine, and we're gonna pick it up at verse seven. It said, um, "The Lord our righteousness belong unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah." Now, these are the ones they say that's Negroes in America. So they got the confusion of faces, too. That's what you're saying. So let's keep going. It says, as of this day, to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all of Israel that are near, that are far off throughout all the countries, whether thou have driven them because of their trespass and they had trespassed against thee. Let's clear something up right now. That can't be used because it is not talking about uh you don't know what your ethnicity is by looking at your face like they don't look black no more we know that because all you got to do is go to psalms chapter 44 and it'll tell you what confusion of faces mean so let's see what confusion of faces mean psalms chapter 44 let's pick it up it has absolutely nothing to do with skin color psalms chapter 44 and i'm gonna pick it up at uh let's see why i can grab this set Psalms 44 and verse 15. Here we go. This is what confusing the faces is. It says, my confusion is continually before me and the shame of my face have covered me. Confusing the faces actually mean to be confounded, to have that confused look. You ever seen when somebody is ashamed, how he had his stuck look? And to further prove it, you can go to Jeremiah the seventh chapter Jeremiah the seventh chapter, so we can look at it again. Confusing the faces has absolutely nothing to do with your skin tone. So let's see, Jeremiah. So let's go to Jeremiah. Bear with me. Okay, Jeremiah the seventh chapter and the nineteenth verse. Here we go again. It says, "Do they provoke me to anger?" Say the Lord. Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? So this is literally what it is talking about. The confusion of their faces is confoundment and shame. It has absolutely nothing to do with uh, looking like a different ethnic group. So we can't be using that no more. I had to take you to school on that one, my dear brother. Also, it was something else my brother said. Um, um, oh, also, uh, when you go to Hosea chapter 8, verse 8, it lets us know Matter of fact, I'll just take it though. Let's go to Hosea chapter 8 and verse 8. So this Hosea 8, 8, it lets us know that the bulk of the bulk of Judah in itself would be, let's see, Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. But they are gone up to Assyria and a wild ass alone by Ephraim, he have had lovers. And we can skip down to 11 because Ephraim have made many altars to sin and altars shall be unto uh, unto him to sin. So I have to add, throw that in there, because the number one thing that God even was focusing on with us 
Is that us taking on the gods of these other people? Of course, I don't disagree with my brother that a lot of that has to start by you mingling with these people. But when you try to use things like confusing the faces, then you have to use that all the way around the board. And it said Judah will have a confusing the faces. But you say Judah is the Negro. So if Judah is the Negro, and then earlier my brother brought up uh, colorism. That's what he brought up when you talked about, uh, uh, you know, how the Afro-Latinos are treated. But there's a big difference between colorism and racism. And let me go back to the curses to explain it. Uh, Deuteron why I went in the beginning. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Because this one seems not to get addressed. It's like we kind of skipped straight over this one. So this is uh, Deuteronomy 28. And um, let me see. Deuteronomy 28. Let me pick it up at uh, uh, verse 4. Oh, no, no. I ain't going to even go to that one. Let me go to Deuteronomy 28 and 43. 28 and 43. That's what I brought up earlier. It says, the stranger that is within thee. Now, y'all remember this, because I brought this up earlier. Shit, get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. If you go look, the brother brought up earlier, he said it's because the Afro-Latinos stay amongst themselves and breathe. Well, how do you how do you do that? Because they're put in ghettos. They put in ghettos like the rest of the Israelites around the world. That's just like us over here in America. It says, and then the stranger amongst them shall come up high and they'll be down low. You know who run most of the governments in those uh, in, 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 in most of those countries? It's the people that do not look like them. And mind you, I'm not saying that you don't have Israelites around that look like Jennifer Lopez. Nobody's saying that. That would be stupid. We got them in our family. What I'm saying is there's no way that a whole population, as a matter of fact, let me go and go back to the script. So let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, let's see, I'm going to pick it up at, uh, I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 29. So this is Isaiah chapter 29. Now people kind of debate on rather what this mean, what this mean. But what we do know is, it's definitely not, not dealing with darkness. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 22. And this is what it said. So this is for the argument that Israel that all started out dark and brown Negroes, all of a sudden just turned into, you know what I'm saying, uh, Robert De Niro's. So let's look at this right here. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 22. And it says, therefore, thus saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall, shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. So if you're going to take that with saying confusion of faces has something to do with uh, how you're going to look as far as your skin tone lighting up. This just said the whole house of Israel would never wax pale. So they would never get lighter, you know, like they just going to get bleached all of a sudden. So, I mean, that kind of just shoots itself in the head. But then we can continue. I got another one for you, though. So let's go to uh, we're going to go to let me see. We're going to go to another prophet. Let's go to the prophet Nahum. Let's look at the prophet Nahum. This Nahum chapter 2, Nahum 2 and 10. And this is what it says it's concerning the Israelites. She is empty and void and waste, and the heart melted, and the knees smite together, and much pain is in all loins, and the faces of them all gather blackness. So we just going to get so uh literal and terminological with the words and dealing with color it say that all their faces gather blackness and the funny thing about it when i used to read this i thought this was just more of a of a like a spiritual thing like meaning depression until i went and picked up that bogus niv i think the esv too and they knew it was dealing with color because why in there it say their face gather paleness so they turned them white because they knew this verse, one of these verses, get them in a whole bunch of trouble. So I just had to throw that out there so people won't keep using that confusion the faces because it's actually going to cause confusion the doctrine. Now, again, let's get back to the 12 tribes. So i like to look at some. Let's go to, now, we see the chart that the brother had up with REI. And I like that he did that because it's more of an original chart because now, you know, a lot of them has been altered. You know, IUIC, they had enough sense to add this on there. But it still shows that, uh, you know, 
it's 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 off. It's really off. Isaiah chapter eleven. Let's go to chapter eleven and verse eleven. Let's check it out. Now this is mainly, and if you read it, we're gonna see who it's talking about because it's gonna talk about Ephraim and then Judah. So let's pick it up. Isaiah eleven eleven, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set His hand again a second time to recover the remnant of His people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush, which is Ethiopia, and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. So when you go look at a map, you're going to see all these countries is in Africa. North e it go from Ethiopia to Northeast Africa all the way up to by where the land is. And then it say the islands of the sea. You got two whole, whole different uh, sides of the islands of the sea. You got us over here and you got the Mediterranean, which only makes sense. All you got to do is look on the map and know the history. But let's continue reading. Let's see what the next one say. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, which was already scattered by the Assyrians. You can read uh, plenty of books. They, you know, Babylon of Timbuktu, uh, Hebrewisms of West Africa. And you'll see that the people like the Ibu tribe and all that, they got 2,700 years of history. And they tell you that they migrated from the Assyrians over into Africa. Let me continue. It says, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and, and, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So who went to the four corners of the earth? Judah. Judah went to the fourth corners of the earth. And I'm going to address, I'm going to address the uh, Jeremiah 52 with the two in captivity because I see they get used a lot. The people that's definitely got a historical tone to it. And let me show you what this means though. So it says Judah from the four corners of the earth. The further back that up, you'll see it in the scriptures. Let's go to, uh, let's go back to Deuteronomy. So let's go to Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. Deuteronomy 32, just to confirm it. Deuteronomy 32, because y'all got to keep in mind and remember, Israel, the northern kingdom, messed up first. And that's why God was so mad at Judah, because if anything, we should have been trying to recover them or get them back right with God. But we turned around and played the heart and, and, and did exactly what they did. So he sent us as far away from the borders as possible. Deuteronomy chapter 32. And I'm going to read verse 26. He said, I said, I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to, uh, to cease from among men. And so we know who that is. That's us. You know, the transatlantic slave trade. Everywhere these quote unquote so-called black people were scattered in them slave boats. People act like they don't know who they are. The memory of them has ceased from among men. They don't know who they are and people don't know who they are. You find little bitty pockets of them that might have a remnant of something that a grandfather passed down. But that's another thing. And another thing I want to talk about, when he read um, Second Esthers, which I knew that was going to come up. So let's go take a look at it. Second Esthers, uh, chapter 13, verse 40 through 45 is what he read. And explain it explains the ten tribes diaspora over the waters. Uh, it say they made a league to leave and find a place to keep their statue. And it says also a keynote that it took a year and a half. And this is talking about the land asset. Uh, now, what's funny about this is it said that they would go there where they would keep the law. But when you look at the Aztecs and a, a bunch of other Native American groups. They was not keeping the law. You you can't find, I, I've yet to find an eighth day circumcision with them, but you know where you can find it? Where we just read in Isaiah 11, 11. When you go over there and look at the Ebu and the Lemba over in Ghana and all those places like that, they actually still keep eighth day, uh, 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 they still keep eighth day circumcision. They even keep the woman menstrual laws where they woman have to uh, go away from the house when she's on her monthly. I don't see this in the Native American history. Also, it also says in 2nd Ezra 13, 40 through 45, um, of course, it said that they were carried the law, but you, you don't see any mentioning of them building boats or anything like that. Why? Because if you take 2nd Ezra or the Apocrypha as scripture, then you have to look at it and say, well, where did they go through? 
All you gotta do is look at the C over there. It lines right up with Isaiah the eleventh chapter. You can even go to the twelfth chapter. But that's so that's another one. But also, I would like to, uh, if you go to, let me see, um, Zephaniah three and ten. Zephaniah three and ten. So I'm gonna check out Zephaniah three and ten just to make that a little bit add a little more sauce onto that. Zephaniah three and ten. So yeah, the um. The, the whole packing of making the law that they was going to keep the law and then in the land outside of their own then we got a problem because if we see it was people that cutting their face which is strictly against the law in leviticus to tell you don't make no markings on you then that mean it, it was somebody there when they got there which already defeats the prophecy because it said nobody would be there you see what I'm saying? Or that mean they was not keeping the law, which means they're not Israelite. So it's a double bubble either way it goes. So um, let me see what was I going to go. Oh, Zechariah uh, chapter 3. Let me see. Zechariah 3. And uh, let me see. Pick it up. Man. Okay, it says, uh, let me see. Hi. Oh, my bad. All right, all right. So, what we're going to now do is get into the rebuttal round. The rebuttal round is also um, set for 15 minutes. Uh, claim your inheritance. Whenever you're ready, you can begin your rebuttal, brother. Okay, what I implore everyone to do, it doesn't, doesn't take long to fact check these things. We're in the age of information. Uh, information has been uh, proliferated for our learning. Mm -hmm. So, if you, uh, google circumcision native americans it's gonna take 0.67 seconds to pop up uh christopher columbus reported circumcision being practiced by native americans it was also practiced by the incas the aztecs and the mayans and he just said that they don't do that it probably started among south american tribes as a blood sacrifice or ritual mutilation to test bravery and endurance and its use later evolved into a rite of initiation see they don't understand uh the holy scriptures and that's why we are back to teach the holy scriptures and i i said earlier and i read the verses that prove that judah and israel the northern and southern kingdom will be oppressed together so wherever we are in the world uh we're going to be oppressed together so I, I made that very clear so this is the known world uh before columbus this is what the people uh of that time knew uh they just knew africa europe and asia that's all they knew so now when you uh take a close look at it right this is the known world before columbus so if you look at the whole uh what we know now the americas and greenland and and australia and new zealand right they only knew the lighted area here africa europe and asia that's all they knew uh before columbus and that's why they called uh columbus finding the new world a discovery as if people wasn't living here from 700 bc to 1492 so it was millions of of indigenous people living here uh for that long you see what I'm saying? So over that time, uh, he is correct that they that they became corrupted over that time span. But when Columbus got there, they were still keeping the, the, the law that he says they don't keep circumcision. So, uh, you know, I'm just clarifying your uh, confusion, brother. You understand? So that would be arson. Uh, you can call it. Canada, America, Mexico, and the Caribbean is what we call it today. Hawaii, Alaska, South America, Greenland, uh, Chukchi Peninsula, Australia, and New Zealand, where never mankind dwelt outside of what they didn't know. They didn't know about all these places up in here. See what I'm saying? They ain't know. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But since the uh, 12 tribe chart focuses on the americas 
uh, then we got to see how we got here. Arsereth is Canada, America, Mexico, Caribbean. Okay, we're focusing on the Americas, South America. While your ancestors that you agree in the southern kingdom were traveling west to the Americas on ships, the northern kingdom traveled east out of Assyria to the Americas on ships. So in 70 AD, you got the, the destruction of Jerusalem. We went and lived in Africa for 1500 years until the start of the slave trade. And then the start of the slave trade was close to 1619 AD. And then we got shipped over here to the Americas. In 718 BC, the uh, Israel, the northern kingdom, escaped the Assyrian captivity and went through the uh, sea, namely a year and a half to all everywhere. That where never mankind dwelt. So we focus in on the Americas. The southern kingdom traveled west out of Israel it, into and out of Africa to the Americas on ships. The northern kingdom traveled east out of Assyria to the Americas on ships. Uh, now that you know uh, how the northern kingdom came to the Americas, it's crystal clear how to identify our brothers. Okay, so uh, uh, of course we're going to still disagree. Okay, so we got uh, the Northern Kingdom here. We got Reuben or the Seminole indigenous. We got Simeon and Levi or the Dominican and Haitian indigenous. There's Judah or Negroes. Zebulon or Guatemala to Panama indigenous. Issachar or Mexican indigenous. Dan or Moors and Afro Mauritanians. Gad are North American indigenous. Asher are Brazilian indigenous. Uh, and Dan, let me tell you about Dan here. Because the, the most high waited for his repentance, uh, they, they won't be in uh, the chart in Revelation. They won't be a part of the congregation because they refuse to repent and, and, be, and become one with the fold of the United Kingdom of Israel. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that bites the horse heels so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for your salvation, O Most High, but you decide to sell us into slavery and make a deal with the devil. Uh, you can't do that, and you're going to pay for it. All right. Gad are the North American indigenous. Manasseh are Cuban indigenous, Ephraim are Puerto Rican indigenous, Benjamin are Jamaican indigenous. Okay, so now when when the northern kingdom made it to the Americas on the and they landed on the west coast, so you know that's what they was talking about, the terrible cedars. Over time, when they from 17, 7, 18 BC. To, they lived here in the Americas all this time. I want to say 1,700 years if I got my math right. Or 2,000 years if, if I got my math right. Somewhere like that. The Portuguese began to conquer their newly discovered lands that they didn't know anything about that I showed just a second ago in 1492. So they began to conquer these lands and then over time, to, you know, to 1700s, they conquered all of the their newly discovered uh, location where these millions of people lived. All right. So that's and we were oppressed together. So the Northern Kingdom was oppressed, followed by all other Edomite dominated countries during the Renaissance. The revived Roman Empire, the daughter of Babylon, Babylon the Great. OK, so that's España, Portugal, Great Britain, United States, Polka. France and France. So they all took part in our destruction. The Kalina people are in Brazil. That's where they're from. And it comes from Hebrew 3641, Kalna, named after where they were from 
in Assyria. The Kalina people was named after where they were from in Assyria. So when you say scattered, right, they came in and, and, and beat everybody's asses in, in wars over and over again all throughout the lands, all throughout the Americas. And that's how they got scattered and they got mingled with the people and their their color changed over time. And of course, there's going to be millions of people. That's how it works. So Guyana is a country located in the northeast eastern corner of South America. Indigenous peoples inhabited Guyana prior to European settlement and their name for the land, Guyana, land of water, gave the country its name. Present day Guyana reflects its British and Dutch colonial past and its reactions to that past. It is the only English speaking country of South America since Guyana gained its independence in 1966. The country's chief economic assets have been its natural resources. So that's what they were coming after. The conquerors uh, want the land for what is in the land, the treasures that are in b beneath the land. So that's the reasons why they uh, do that. So the mineral resources of uh, the Americas are many. Okay, so in in America alone, the average annual value of mineral products, uh, 1964 to 1968, let's say the average annual value in millions of dollars is 249 million in Alabama, uh, five. Uh, five billion, uh, four hundred four forty million in Texas. Three billion four hundred ninety-seven uh, million in Louisiana. So we know that the people were forced to the Louisiana too. The Creoles were forced to Louisiana and and all throughout the Americas. That's that's just how it works. So when they started conquering, they became scattered all throughout the Americas, and they mingled with the conquerors as well a little bit. So these are the gold uh, mines all throughout the United States. They're all everywhere. And this is what the people wanted from the Native Americans that the Native Americans w w didn't feel it necessary uh, to utilize these minerals. They, they didn't find a use for them. They didn't uh, focus on sciences like the Europeans do. Okay, so many are called, few are chosen. Make no tearing to turn to the Most High, and put not off from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Most High come forth, and in your security you shall be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. The indigenous or northern kingdom or Joseph will rule Negroes or Judah. Benjamin and Levi, the Southern Kingdom. So you, you you better respect them. Isaiah eleven and thirteen. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. All right, got that. So that's what the 12 tribes chart that Ariya put out for us. And uh, it's the, the most uh, effective teaching tool uh, that we have ever seen in, in, in our nation to, in order to show people who they are and uh, get them on board to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You see the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Ephraim, the tribe of Manasseh, the Cubans, the, Port the Puerto Ricans are Ephraim, the tribe of Benjamin, the Jamaicans, the West Indians. Uh, tribe of Iskar, the, the Mexicans, uh, starting with the Afro-Mexicans and the mixed uh, Mexican indigenous. All of these are indigenous peoples. Tribe of Levi, as taught by Arya, are Haitians. Tribe of Naphtali are Hawaiians and Samoans. Samoans. Tribe of Reuben, the Seminole Indians. Tribe of Zebulon is pa uh, Panamanians and Colombians. Uh, tribe of Ashar is Brazilians and Argentinians. Tribe of Simeon are Dominicans. And the tribe of Gad, North American Indians.
In order for Israel and Judah to become one nation again, you must concede the debate, Mikael. And the credits. How much time I'm looking at? He's not going to tell me. All right, so. Brother, you got you a go minute and 30 seconds. In the Lost Tribes and Promised Lands, uh, when Columbus uh, met with varying people, right uh they would respond here they responded here O israel the the most high our power the most high is one shema yisrael adonai elohanu adonai Echot. all right so that's that's who he met whenever he came here the 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 native americans all throughout this land are Hebrews. So another reference is that uh, in South America with Jews of the 10 tribes. Okay, so it says, strange to say, a Portuguese Morano of Villa Flor, who strange to say also called himself Montesinos and afterwards assumed the name Aaron Levi, informed Manasseh that he had mingled in South America with Jews of the 10 tribes. And that's in Christopher Columbus, the participation of the Jews in the Spanish and Portuguese discoveries. <laughs> but how are you going to discover a land where it's already occupied? You can't. That's because the Israelites own it all. That's it. All right. All right, we're going to move uh, forward to Mikael. We're going to set this time before. Once again, 15 minutes for your rebuttal. Family, whenever you're ready, you could begin your premise. I mean, your rebuttal, Mikael. Unmute your mic. Yeah, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Now, as y'all noticed, um, when y'all was checking out uh, my brother's clapback, two things stood out. He ignored the whole body modification, the cuttings of the skin, which went against the script of prophecy that he read was that they would keep their own law. He, he skipped past that part. Second, what he did was he read, uh, he, he, read, he read a thing that said that Native Americans circumcised themselves. Did everybody hear me clearly? Because I see y'all in the chat saying y'all heard me kept putting emphasis on eighth day circumcision. You notice it didn't say eighth day circumcision in there, which would make it a Hebrew custom. Hell, ancient Egyptians circumcised, but they did it when they was 30 years old, 20 years old, or something like that. So that's null and void. So that, that, was, that was real smooth on how he did that. But to really just go on here and drop the dagger, man, we've been having fun long enough, you know, my brother bringing that good information, making a good fight. So uh, I'm going to have to do it to you, man. Don't have to do it to you. Luke chapter 21. Now, I want everybody that's a Bible scholar, especially if you know anything about the New Testament. This is about to be a problem because I know my brother agrees because he knows the history that the northern kingdom was casted out. And, um, you know, they was kicked out, dr driven out by the uh, Assyrians, right? They were already driven out. That's why a lot of uh, brothers' argument is that the Gentiles in the New Testament is exclusively, exclusively lost Israelites, right? And so the mission would be to recover the lost Israelites, right? I know my brother agrees with that, I believe. I don't want to bear false witness. So we have a problem which is going to go strictly against what he just said, being that second Esther's or the Apocrypha is 440 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament. How could this happen? How could this blunder happen? So let's go to Luke, the 21st chapter, and I'm going to uh, pick it up at verse 24. Listen to this, man. It says, uh, it says, uh, let me see. For war to them that are safe. Okay, it says, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Okay. 
and they shall and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and jerusalem shall be trotted down by the hands of the gentiles until the time of the gentiles be fulfilled now there's no problem we all know that in 70 a.d the israelites you know what i'm saying uh fled jerusalem we know that you know what i'm saying people went into africa and ended up in west africa and all that but here's where my here's where my contention comes at let's go to acts the second chapter now i want y'all to keep that in mind this is acts the second chapter here's where it's about to get ugly acts chapter two now mind you he's saying that the native americans our northern tribe is northern kingdom israelites that came over to Asherah, which is America. So, surely what I'm about to read right here, they should have been here. Acts chapter 2, and uh, let me pick it up at uh, 1. Acts chapter 2 and 1. Here's what it says. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So these all the Israelites gathering up, even, even the Jews from all over the world, right? Now watch this. Now, mind you, they said they was going, they made a pact to keep the law. And we know if you go to uh, Leviticus, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, the law was three times a year, all Israelites had to come back to Jerusalem. You see what I'm saying? They all had to come back to Jerusalem. And so here you go, verse two. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as on fire, and it sat upon each uh, uh, each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Why would they speak with other tongues? Well, they were all speaking different languages because they were scattered to different parts of the earth. And America, according to him. But let's see what this says. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So whatever major nation that they was in, they definitely should be here. It says, now when this was noise, noise abroad, the, mult the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how here we every man in his own tongue, wherein we were born. The Perinthians, watch these people he finna name. All the places with the these some places where they were scattered at. The Perinthians and the Medes and the and the Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and the Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and Phrygia and Pam and, 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 and Pamaphylia and Egypt and in parts of Libya. And in Cyrene and, and, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Watch this. Cretes and Arabians, because he's even in Arabia, we do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful works of God. Now, my thing is, how on earth Asherah thing get named, but they just forgot about them? Oh, you mean to tell me all them Israelites was over there in Asherah, but they not even on the list? They ain't make the cut? Come on, man. Let's get down to verse 14. It says, but Peter standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken my words. And so he's addressing that everybody that would have been keeping the law or trying to keep the law, come back to the law, that was Israelites, was devote Israelites from all over the world. Ain't no way they could have been in Asherah, that is America, and they not even be on the list. Like that law, especially the large population that he just ran down to us. So like, how is they missing out a whole New Testament history though? Like, I really don't understand that. But I'm gonna continue though. But like I said, he didn't address the eighth day circumcision. I I I, I give him a, a break on that one. But if anybody ever want to check when I was reading Isaiah chapter 11 and it was naming off them people, you could go see like Hamath would be like modern day Syria Shinar 
it's mostly uh like, like parts of Iraq, ancient, ancient Babylon, you know what I'm saying, and Bozra. Elam, modern uh, part Iran and per well, that was Persia, Iran. Kush, of course, Ethiopia, you know what I'm saying, of course, and yes, Dan is over there, you know what I'm saying. Uh, also, Pathros would be parts of Upper Egypt, and um, Assyria had uh, always had the areas of uh, Syria all the way to parts of Iraq. So when you look over there, you can see how if somebody, of course, according to, uh, let me go to, this is the one I was looking for earlier, Zephaniah 3, that's what I was looking for. It says, um, <clears throat> give me one second. It says, it says, for then will I turn to the people of pure language and they may all call upon my name, the Lord, to serve him with one consent. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my supplants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring my offering. And if anybody know anything, if all you got to do is go look up the slave coats, you know, uh, people talk about, you know, the Ivory Coast and all that. But all that is comprised within the slave coast and the border stopped right in Ethiopia. That's how we get over to West Africa. It's even the book is even telling you that. So you you not you know what I'm saying? You get this is why I say the, the 12 tribes chart is not legit because it just leaves too many ask. It, it leaves too many questions unanswered also i like to uh go back to isaiah the 11th chapter because i know my brother um soul is definitely gonna be picking these up so i want to go back to isaiah the 11th chapter and take a look at one more little thing so <clears throat> let me see isaiah 11 and let me go back to verse 13 and this is what it said uh i started 12. It said he shall set up an ensign of the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Verse 13, the envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Now, if you ever look at the Israelites that's over in Africa that we know of, like the Ebus, you know what I'm saying? Um, the Ebus, the Shanti, the Falashas, uh, which is called uh, Beta Israel over in Ethiopia, uh, which is more likely the tribe of Dan. The Limbas, that's over in South Africa. You got the Ga, you got the Yoruba. When you ever look at these people and they realize that, you know, that we're Israelites over here, we're kin to them, the first thing they do is see that chart. And they're like, man, why I'm not on that chart? You know, they feel some type of way. And then you got the brothers over here saying more than likely it's just a little bitty pinch of Israelites over there because it's a remnant. You know what I'm saying? And so they're more than likely some dirt, some, 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 some musty Africans or something like that. That's the beef that's going on. When in reality, when you look, when it talks about a remnant, it calls us a remnant. But a simple fact, we're not all together anymore. That's another thing that go against what he just tried to put out there which I'm definitely going to address in the question question and answer round, but you can go look through, um, let me see. As a matter of fact, let me go there real quick, real quick. Uh, let me see, Jeremiah chapter 31. Let me see. Go there, Jeremiah chapter 31 real quick. How much time I got left, bro? Uh, you have approximately uh, three minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, Jeremiah 31. And let me see. 6010. Jeremiah 31, 6010. Okay, yeah, I want to read this real quick. It says, uh, uh, let me see. It says, uh, for there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount of Ephraim should cry, Arise, and let us go up to Zion, the Lord our God. But thus saith the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations. Publishly praise ye, saith, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. So he called, you know what I said, like Israel, I can go to about five more spots where he called us all the remnant anyway, because we're not together. Remember, in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and uh deuteronomy 28 and 
and and and 25 uh 28 and 25 it lets you know that we're going to be uh small we're going to be small amongst the nations that we scatter meaning although it's a lot of us collectively wherever for the most part where we're scattered at we're usually the minority um as as in comparisons to the other nations so verse 8 it says behold i will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth and with them the blind and the lame and the woman with the child and her the travail and the child together a great company shall return thither they shall come with weeping and with supplications will i lead them i will cause them to walk by the rivers of the waters in the straight way wherein they shall not stumble for i am the father of israel and ephraim is my firstborn why did i read that because i know my brother probably liked that but it literally lines up with Isaiah 11, uh, verse 11 through 14. That's what it's talking about. The waterway is going to pass from. It's going to be an ensign through these areas. So the chart, although, you know, it has some, it, it, like he said, it has a good hook for it. where it can bring you in and teach. But I think the, once it hook you, the more you start looking into it, you're going to have to kind of uh, question it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to question it if you're being sincere. So also, I just wanted to say something too. Um, let's read. I want to go to Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 23, because my brother read earlier where it talked about uh, where he compared the Israelites to the Ethiopians, which we both agreed on that they were black skinned people. Jeremiah 13 and 23 will confirm it even more it's this is why he compared them to the ethiopian it says can the ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots no he cannot and neither can the israelites that's why we were compared to him so i'm glad you went there it says then may ye also do good that is uh accustomed to doing evil so no the ethiopian can't change his black skin just like a leopard can't change his black spots. That's why God said, oh, children of Israel, are you not like the Ethiopians unto me? And we had never waxed pale. We looked the way we still looked for the most part. For the most part, you're gonna have your exceptions. But uh, basically that's my, uh, that's my time right there. All right, time, time, time. All right, all right, now that everybody got there. Premise and they rebuttals out of the way. Let's get into that interrogation. Um, since uh, claim your answers were first, we will allow Mikael to do the interrogation first. We want to set this timer for 10 minutes. And uh, whenever you're ready, uh, Mikael, you can ask Claim your first question. Okay, shalom, brother Claim. Shalom. Uh, yeah, good presentation, brother. Good presentation. Um, could you go to uh Luke chapter 21 for me what I read earlier. You go to Luke chapter 21 and um let me see. Uh, yeah, that was uh Luke 21 and I wanted to know, bro. I mean, I take that back. I'm sorry. Not Luke 21, Acts 2. My bad. Wrong one. Acts 2. That was the last one I read. Acts chapter 2. Okay, what verse? So I, uh, basically, you ain't got to read all of it, but you could just go to, uh, you could just start from, uh, just read verse 8 through 11. Okay, Acts 2. Yeah. Verse 8. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born parthians and medes and elamites and the dwellers in mesopotamia and in judea and cappadocia in pontus and asia phrygia and Pamph pamphylia in egypt and in the parts of libya about cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues, the wonderful works of our power. Okay. Hey, um, my question is the obvious. Um, being that, you know, this time, according to what you were saying, 
because it only said it only took them a year and a half and uh second Ezra's uh 13 40 through 45 it only took them a year and a half which is amazing in itself you got to go around russia and the Bering Strait and all that but that being said it only took them a year and a half to get to Assyria. and of course we know they have been cast out by the assyrians by the time that this is uh written in acts chapter 2. so my question to you is where are the israelites from Assyria? they're in the americas like i presented all night no, what I'm saying is, why didn't why didn't Peter name any of them here? Oh, in this in this passage, because the uh, when they escaped the Assyrian captivity, they fled in all directions. So a hundred percent of them did not es uh, escape at the exact same time, and, and whatnot. And uh, the ones that went in ships, they came, they went to. The Americas and other locations, uh, Australia, and e everywhere else, but the sign is is focused on the Americas. Okay, I um I get that the sign. Um, I know we we, we quite clear on that that the, that the sign is focused on the Americas. That's 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 my whole problem that I'm having. That's the problem I always had with the chart, being that they were in the Americas. How is it during a vital time like this where it specifically said that devout Jews, and we know that could have been a generic term of uh, just for Israelites, period. It don't have to just be the kingdom of Judah. It said that the Jews from all over the world, all over the world, gathered to this place. How is it that not, not one of them from Asherah or America was there if they was keeping the law? Well, they kept, they kept the law for one thing, and then uh, for two, it, it would take a year and a half to get there. So, I mean, they they were building their own civilization over here. They uh, knew that the uh, temple had got destroyed. Remember? Mm. So basically, so basically, Sam, all the other Israelites was uh, was basically accustomed to coming, but the ones that went to Asherah just basically said they would just, you know, they were just going to stay there and just not come back to the land and at no point, period. Uh, right, pretty much. But if but if you want to include the Northern Kingdom in, in the devout Jews statement, which we know that Jews come from Judah and that the uh, Judites, the Southern Kingdom, escaped their, uh, the Babylonian captivity as well. So they uh, there was only a remnant, remnant in Jerusalem and, and in Israel left so even the judites were up there in uh europe and all the rest of these places around here uh, mm -hmm. you see so but if okay. you want to if you want to say that th these are northern kingdom israelites that's that's fine too but i mean the ones there they were scattered to the four corners of the earth it, it, along with judah it, i don't know why you are saying that they're not okay um that's 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 cool all right um uh, i'd like to also ask you um are you aware of the uh the book of mormon yeah okay um and then uh in the first book uh in the book of norman it's called the book of nephi i know you're probably familiar with it n-e-p-h-i it say um i'm paraphrasing it says uh a family of Israelites fled Jerusalem in 600 BC. The father's name was Lehi. He's supposedly a, a descendant of Joseph. And when you go to uh, First Nehi, uh, a First uh, Nephi, chapter 17, verse 8, it says, The Lord spake unto me, saying, Construct a ship after the manner which I shall show thee, that I might carry thy people across these waters. So my question is, do you think that the Book of Mormon, being that uh, they were some of the first people to ever say that the Native Americans were Israelites, of course, you know, they all also said that uh, we was cursed Canaanites and all that type of stuff. Do you think that the Book of Mormon could have had anything to do and any 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 type of influence with the 12 tribes chart that Ari made? Uh, I don't I'm not familiar with them being uh accepting those records i i don't know if they did or or, or did okay 
Okay, that's cool. Um, okay, let me ask you this. Uh, let's go to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Um, I had a question because I heard you earlier. You kind of alluded to uh, the situation that's going on with the racism and uh, a lot of the Latin American countries that our brothers are in because we both agree that we have people there. Uh, we're just trying to determine exactly who it is. So uh, what I'm asking you is, you kind of alluded to it being more of a colorism thing than a, a racism thing. So uh, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 43, I read this a couple of times today. I did it for a reason. I would like to ask you, brother, what, according to this, it says, let me read it. It says, um, the stranger that is within thy, uh, what are you reading? Thee, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43. Okay. It says, the stranger that is with thee, within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Verse 44. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. And it lets you know in the next verse, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and pursue thee. So if, we, if this is a sign letting us know who the Israelites are, my question is, who are the strangers amongst, let's say, the Mexicans that that's Israelites? Who are these strangers that's up over them very high that uh, can lend unto them, like who has the financial control, uh, can lend unto them, but they can't lend unto, unto them? So which, 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 I'm just going to use Mexico as an example. Which, what, what people would you say that is over there? Okay, first, we can I, I, I gotta I gotta clarify something because you misheard me. I I wasn't speaking about colorism or nor racism not one time tonight. What I was describing about them having lighter complexion is that they uh, mingled with the people because they put themselves, you know, what I'm saying in that type of situation where uh, and have forgotten their heritage and their laws and, and became corrupt and all these things. So they began to uh, marry interracial interracially and that's how they those millions of people lighten their skin tone now what, what was your question about this okay all right man and i apologize if i uh, uh misunderstood what point that you were making um so you wasn't really going towards the colorism thing well i guess that was general for everybody who always do that my question is if you take um a country at, like mexico for example who's um, high uh, who's over them that, that's lending to them and things of that nature right like right, it says the stranger amongst them it's not talking about like an outside entity so who's mm -hmm. around that community of israelites that's over them that can lend to them all uh, right that would be the europeans uh, uh, which one namely the jewishers and, and the po portuguese the all the all the edomite dominated european countries time 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 all right so we're going to switch this thing over you want to give claim your heritage 10 minutes? Uh, claim, whenever you're ready, you can begin your interrogation, brother. Okay. I guess my first question would have to be uh, a, a surprise um, agreement that we had here. Okay, so you said Latinas and Latinos are Israelites. Uh, okay, so uh, are they the Northern Kingdom or the Southern Kingdom? Do you want me to specify what I mean by Latinos? I, I, yeah, I will, but I want you to uh, link them to Israel. You oh, said they're Israelites, so are they the Northern Kingdom or the Southern Kingdom? I'm saying they're, they're the Kingdom of Judah. That's the, uh, between Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, all the Afro-Latinos. I was hoping that you answered improperly like that. Okay, so now in Jeremiah 50, 33, I knew you was gonna go there. Yeah, of course. You got no choice. <laughs> Jeremiah 50 33, it says, Thus says the most high of armies, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. So uh, when you see that word were, you do realize what that how that's rendered, correct? That a prophecy is talked about in past tense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a future prophecy, right? 
I'll answer the, I'll answer the question. Okay, so if they were pressed it's together. Actually, I'll, I'll show you. It's actually a dual prophecy. It happened once historically, and it's happening again right now. And I'll show you where it's at and where you think it's at. Okay, and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. And and uh, there's another verse that says they furthered the affliction. So now, do you accept uh, that the Northern Kingdom are in the Americas? If so, how can we identify them by their by words today what are they called today well for the most part i believe that uh the southern kingdom is over here i'm not saying that it's not some over here but i believe those prophecies are specifically dealing with uh the southern kingdom coming over here so to answer your question because it's kind of like two questions if you go to concerning jeremiah 50 and 17 uh we could go to the first part. Let's see. Uh, Jeremiah 50 and 33 says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were, were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast, refused to let them go. Um, let's go. Jeremiah chapter 50. So you got that right. I read 50 and 33. Now listen to this. Jeremiah 50 and 17. Israel is a scattered sheep and the lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria have devoured him. And last, this king Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon have broken his bones. So if you look historically, even if you dealt with what, what happened with uh, King Hezekiah, you know that when, they, when the Assyrians came through, they already had Israel. They came through and started literally conquering between the times of even uh, Sennacherib and um, 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 uh, Shalemazah. They went through conquering town after town after town. And by the time they made it to try to uh, take over Judea, take over uh, Jerusalem, Hezekiah cried out to the Lord and an angel came and put a plague on it. So this has actually happened more times than people think it has. And even if you want to bring it to modern day times, you can find uh, 10 tribes of Ephraim and you can find some of the dispersed of Judah over in the land of Africa, all in captivity together right now. Okay, and they've so, been trying uh, to go back to for the longest, and they won't let them. Oh, oh my, my last part was they've been trying to go back to Israel for the longest, and they won't let them. Okay, so so now you you uh, are trying to put uh, the Assyrian kingdom of uh, being the same rulers as the Babylonian kingdom, saying that the Judah and uh, Assyria were uh, oppressed together, but that's not the case, brother. You see, what I'm saying because because Manasseh, the king of Judah. Uh, have done these abominations and have done weakly above all that the Amorites did which were before him and have made Judah also to sin with his idols so Manasseh uh, was the king uh, at that time so because of his offense uh, the northern kingdom went into captivity first under Assyria so we know good and well that the Assyrian kings list are completely different people than the Babylonian kings list. And the Assyrian kings list is uh, Sennacherib, uh, Tilgath, uh, Pil Pilzer the third, Asher ben, ben Paul, Sargon the uh, second, when they escaped, and Arsh Arshadon. And then in the Babylonian kings list, you don't see any of those names. You see Nebuchadnezzar the second, Nebuchadnezzar, Hammurabi. Sennacherib and Amel uh, Marduk. So why are you trying to put them in the same captivity under the same rulers? That don't make any sense at all. You don't even get, I don't think you get what I was saying, brother. When you look at it, when it tell us, it say that they were in captivity together. Um, both of the Israelites uh, was in captivity at the same time. That's the point I'm making. And when I added to that point, I said, even if you look over there in Africa today, you have Israelites from the tribe of Judah. Because remember, in Deuteronomy, um, Deuteronomy uh, 28 and in um, Deuteronomy the, 30, uh, the 32nd chapter, it tell us that Judah would be scattered to the four corners. Am I, well, you asking questions. Judah would be scattered to the four corners. So Judah is in Africa to this day, and so is Ephraim, the 10 tribes is in Africa to this day. Do you not agree with that? Of course. But we're talking about the Americas. We're talking about uh, the 12-tribe the, uh, chart. 
that focuses on the Americas. So, of course, you have Israelites in every single country on the face of the planet, and they are very, very easy to identify based on their customs and their languages They're, b before the conquerors came in and, and took away uh, their Hebrew languages and Hebrew roots and Hebrew heritages. You see what I'm saying? So that hap this happened historically over and over and over again, where the Hellenists were, uh, made the Israelites not allowed to uh, practice their customs at all. Remember? Right, right. Okay, so that's the same thing that happened uh, after the book was sealed and, and for the time of the end for us to look back and clearly see what happened to our people in order to reach out to them in the Americas and unify with them because they're going to be the ones ruling. Ephraim okay. rules, remember? So who, so who is Ephraim? Who's the ruler? You say Ephraim rules when? At the end. He's the top king of uh, the top, uh, the top of uh, Israel. You you want me to show you in the text? You do, you do you do you do realize that the first ruler of the ten tribes was Ephraim, right? <laughs> oh, so you saying you're a preterist now? You're a full preterist now? Oh, no, no, brother, that's that's literally simple uh, prophecy understanding. Like when you go back and read history, that's why he even calls the this whole brother. ten. What, what, this when, what when Jacob? Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. Right. This is why he even calls the Northern Kingdom ten tribes Ephraim. Sometimes, do you think every time he say Ephraim, he literally talking about the tribe of Ephraim? No. Sometimes he's talking about, about the all Northern the all Kingdom. ten tribes. I know that. But what I'm telling right, you right, is right. that uh, Ephraim is going to be the one ruling. Don't you? I, I thought you knew that. Well, okay, but you don't. No, I have no. Well, a, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you. I have no problem with that. What's the next question? Oh, you don't have no problem with that. Okay. So then we're going to have to be able to identify these people, brother. Okay. Okay. Give me one second. Let me show you how this is going to be identified. Real simple. Uh, here we go. Mm, give me one second. Mm -hmm. You can turn right over to uh, Revelation. Show you exactly how this is going to happen. I'm glad you asked that too. Most High going to make sure we be able to identify you one second. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Revelations, uh, you got your sword? Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Oh, uh, Revelations 20. My bad. Here we go. Revelations 21. It says, uh, uh, Revelations chapter 20. Let me see. Um, and I can't find it. Oh boy. My bad, I can't find it. I Okay. All right, all right. Uh shout out to both the beta. We're gonna get into the closing. Now we're going to get into the closing. Um, uh, we're going to start out with claim your inheritance. We're going to set this thing for five minutes. Whenever you're ready, brother, you could begin your closing. Okay, so we learned tonight that uh, the REI chart is legit. It, our dear brother and most valued uh, member of, of Judah, uh, Mikael Ben Yisrael, uh, <laughs> did not refute any of the information that I brought out, which was the Americas, uh, focusing on the Americas. So he stayed in Europe and Africa to bring out those, those informations that uh, most Israelites already accept. And this is why um, IUIC and others uh, have uh, been over there to Africa and Ghana and stuff like that in order to teach uh, the people there the airway people, things of that nature. So, I mean, that's not a part of the debate at all. 
So we clearly see that um, the that the uh, the Northern Kingdom came to the Americas when they escaped the Assyrian captivity. We saw that clearly, and so I don't know what else to what else to say. I mean, he agrees with uh four four different uh groups the uh the negroes the Ju judah benjamin levi and the latinas but he he says the afro latinas are israelites and he's but he calls them judah so i don't know how he came to that conclusion he hasn't shown anything that to, 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 to say how he concluded that information so I I have shown that the indigenous people lived here since the 700s, and then over time they corrupted. And he tried to say that I ignored that part. I said that uh, they kept their laws until the conquerors came in, and then they became corrupted. So even even before the conquerors came in, about 1200s or the 14 or whatever, whenever they were going to visit those locations they were uh, using magic and div and divination to cut cutting out people's hearts and stuff like that and trying to sacrifice to uh to to the most high in order to get these uh conquistadors and conquerors away from them but of course that's useless they it didn't work because you got to keep the law statutes and commandments that's the only way that you become free that's the only way that you get success That's it. All right. All right. Shout out to Claim Your Heritage for dropping that site. We're going to now hand this thing over to Mikael, brother Mikael. Um, set the timer for five minutes. Whenever you're ready, you, you can begin your closing, brother. I'll meet your mic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I was saying, uh, uh, yeah, shout out to the brother, man. Good debate. Um, but like I said, uh, I made it quite clear that one of the reasons that the 12 traps chart, you know, uh, he couldn't, I, I wasn't quite satisfied with his answer about Acts chapter two, because being that they were going out to gather the lost sheep of Israel, they definitely asked him if should have been there. Um, also, uh, I did clearly state how Judah would be over here because I read in at least three spots that Judah would be scattered to the four corners and you need ships to do that. That's, that's how, that's how, uh, that's how, um, Israelites got in Mexico. That's how Israelites got in Venezuela. That's how Israelites got in Cuba. That's how Israelites got in Brazil, which is the largest, uh, uh, largest place with the most Israelites. But you know, you don't even see that on a modern day 12 tribe chart. They, they just like forgotten. They not even on that. And so I did explain how they, uh, the Afro Latinos would have gotten over there and they would have been either Judah, Benjamin and Levi being that, um, they got scattered by ships. Also, I was, I was trying to, uh, I was looking for something at the end when a brother had asked me, uh, how would we know about the, um, what tribe is what at the end? And the cool thing about it is, it, it really is a self cut. It kills the whole argument that we know exactly who all 12 are right now. Because when you go to Revelations, for some reason my mind went blank and I couldn't find it, which rarely happens to me. But um, when you go to Revelations, it tells us that there will be uh, 12, there will be 12 gates with the names of the 12 tribes. So it's going to be the most high that's going to decipher and break down exactly who is from what tribe and where. You see what I'm saying? He know better than us. He got a real chart. If y'all want to go off a 12 tribes chart, get the one that's in heaven, man. That's that's in heaven. His joint ain't got no mistakes on it. He ain't going to have to come back later and write Isaiah 11, 11 in the corner like IUIC did. You know, he ain't gonna have to flip flop it and make Reuben go from uh 
from uh uh uh, uh I believe it is uh, the Seminoles or and and then when you look on another chart, he then turned into the Aboriginal Australians. You see what I'm saying? So you would you wouldn't have to do that. And another thing, my brother wasn't able to make sense out of, and I'm glad he he, he was very truthful. And um, when I asked him about the stranger coming up over the Israelites, wherever they scattered at, and being able to lend to them, but them not being able to lend back, right before the deadline buzzer went off, he admitted, he said it. He said, those are the Europeans. So he just admitted that those in Mexico that we're saying are Issachar, some of them are Europeans. Some of them are Europeans by his own admission, but you never see the afro mix. And that's really what I'm doing. Not so as much banging on the 12 tribes chart, but actually trying to bring equality and fairness to our Israelite brothers that scattered all throughout Latin America who don't get looked at. They don't get brought up. Uh, you know, nobody has they women out there. You know what I'm saying? It, it almost seemed like brothers just want exotic booty sometimes. And so they slapping Israelite on. But when you look at the facts of the scriptures, and I'm not saying that about my beloved brother. I'm not saying that about claim. But if, if you look at the scriptures with the prophecies, you see what I'm saying? As far as the sign of how the Israelites are, are, are going to be identified, then, you, you know, you got two different people in most of Latin America, just like you got two different people in America. So if that's the case, we could say that the white American over here is an Israelite. You know why? Because you could say, hey, man, look, we went on slave ships over into America. You know what I'm saying? You know, them just light skinned Jakes. It's the same thing that happened in Mexico with the conquistadors and the Spaniards. All of a sudden, they just disappear huh? like they don't even exist no more. But our brother just said that it's Europeans over there ruling over the Mexican. So that really just helped my case right there. You see what I'm saying? And so with that, man, you know, uh, I enjoyed the debate. You know what I'm saying? I hope I brought enough to be able to uh, convince the audience and edify the people. If not, you know, I know somebody was edified by it. And again, shout out to my brother, Clang. Man, I enjoyed it. All praise to the most high. Time, time. Thanks a lot. Very excellent debate, family. Now it's time for the interrogation, family. Time for the interrogation. All right, so. I already know how this goes. Let me know if you want me to interrogate first. One, for Mikael. Two, for Clayton, your husband's family. One for Mikael, two for claim your inheritance. I'm seeing all deuces. Who the deuce we keeping them? <laughs> ah, all right, all right, all right. We get the point. We're going to start out with claim your inheritance. <laughs> Y'all crazy, man. We're going to start out with claim your inheritance. We get the point. <laughs> Y'all crazy. I got a little strap throw too, man. I don't know what the fuck's going on. So. With that being said, family. <laughs> Yo. All right. So. What's up, Clay? What up? Who's populating? All right, brother. Let's go to let's go to Deuteronomy twenty eight forty three. Deuteronomy twenty eight forty 
You there? Yeah. It says the stranger that is within thee. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. All right. According to uh, Brother Mikael, he's saying that this was uh, speaking of the um, situation that you may have going on in uh, Latina America, and he classifies specifically the um, Afro-Latinas, them being a distinct group from um, the other Latinas. So my question to you, brother, is um, do you make that distinction? Okay, well, uh, that's not as clear as I... Repeat it. Repeat it. Do you make a distinction between Afro-Latinas and other Latinas? Yes. Um, the, All right, so on the 12 tribes chart, what tribe is the Latinas? Ephraim. Ephraim. Okay. That's the, the Northern Kingdom. Okay. So does, does that comprise of only Afro Latinas? Not only, no. Uh -uh. Okay. So my question is. Um, How do you make that distinction between, okay, let's start from this, all right. How did the Afro-Latinas get there? The Afro-Latinas, uh, all Israelites, if they if they keep the law, statutes, and commandments, uh, are, are black people. Now, how, so, did, how did they get to that region? That's what I'm asking. Oh, well, yeah, the Northern Kingdom uh, got, got there, okay, so Ephraim is in, a part of the Northern Kingdom. So they traveled, they escaped to Syria in 718 BC and then went over the ocean, over the Pacific Ocean to the Americas. All right. So uh, name me some of the uh, Afro, I mean, of the Latina tribes. Uh, name me some of them today. Okay. I, I you got the Taino and the Arawak. That's, that's, that's just two simple ones. Uh, speaking about specifically the Puerto Ricans. But you you got a lot of indigenous uh, tribes that are in Central uh, uh, America, the Mexico, as well. Okay, so you're saying that the um, you said Ephraim. Yes. Okay, so the the tribe of Ephraim, uh, came over here. You said in uh, 1800 BC. And yeah, 718 BC. 718 BC. And uh, that comprised of the uh, the Native Americans, some of the Native Americans, and some uh, you said Puerto Ricans. You talking about over in like Puerto Rico? Yeah. See, uh, all Native okay. Americans are Israelites. Uh, so, okay. except for except for the Mongolian ones and the white ones. Okay. All right. So. Um, Do you believe that the, those areas was colonized by the Spanish, the Portuguese, and um, yeah, believe? absolutely. That's that's exactly why it says that the stranger that that came and colonized them uh, uh, will get up very high, and they're gonna land. You know what I mean, because the Jewishers. Okay, the, so um, mm -hmm. how would you be able to make that distinction between the the customs and the languages of the of the indigenous peoples there so you speak hebrew they all speak uh, a form of uh spanish and some call it puerto rican and how yeah, before you... before uh columbus got there they were speaking hebrew and um that's it so but they also so kept, uh, some today kept some biblical hebrew. customs as well huh so you say there's some today speak hebrew maybe not so I don't once know. again how would you be able to identify uh those uh those hebrews as opposed to the, the to the to the colonizer do you believe that um do you believe that you are the seed of your father you believe that yes okay so how would you be able to make that distinction then like right you know, okay. colonizer come and um how would you be able to uh make that distinction 
Okay, so if the daughters of uh, Israel marry a, a, a Spaniard, then uh, their children instantly becomes another nation. But uh, of course, the daughters were Ephraim. But then the men, they stay Ephraim. As uh, long as they don't uh, keep interracially dating forever. If they continue to marry within the tribe uh, over and over again, then they stay dark and they stay evil. All right. So um, once again, how would you be able to make the distinction between uh, the colonizer seed and um, the original Hebrew seed? Because it's all oh, yeah, that's that's one uh, like on a case by case basis that we uh, determine that. So we ask. Case by case basis. Yeah, we would have to. Yeah, as a whole, we know that uh, the dark ones were Ephraim. So then they interracially dated and be and became a light skinned race of people. So, but if uh, if we meet one person and ask them, uh, "Is your father of Spaniard descent or if he indigenous descent that was here before Columbus?" and if they answer, "We are indigenous descent," then we know. Or we have a clue that they are Israelites. And we know that they're Israelites. So it's just based off of what they say. That's what you're saying. Yeah, if they can verify uh, trying to take, for example, saying that giving them the benefit of the doubt that they're telling us the truth. Uh, because, of course, people will naturally be proud of their heritage. And they will say, well, no, nah, my father's a Spaniard. A Spaniard. So I'm the man. Just giving them the benefit of the doubt based off of what they're saying. Do you know what a $5 Indian is? Absolutely. Okay, so explain to me what a five dollar Indian is. A five dollar Indian is a uh, group of uh, white or mulatto people that have um, white fathers that, that created uh, hundreds of thousands of mulatto and white um, Indi indigenous peoples here recently. Right. And then they, they they continue to claim to be Indians. Okay, so so based off of that fact, how can we just go with what somebody's saying and just take it for the benefit of the doubt when you have people lying about their origin? Well, because if we fact check them and see that their father is or great grandfather or their grandfather is indeed not an Israelite or not a dark person which is an Israelite, you see. Uh, they're a white man, oh, well, clearly clearly right. from, from Germany or clearly from some uh, white-dominated European country, and we find that in their... Uh, so you're saying that th this would have to go back to... Uh, their heritage would have to go back to a dark person, that's what you're saying? Yeah, within four generations. Within four generations. Okay, um... Can this be verified anyway through any documentation or any video that you have with uh by um aria this criteria uh, the, no the criteria is is in the whited out series that it explains it because the um the iniquities of the of the children will visit us uh for the to the third and fourth generation you see, so it, it breaks that down very clearly that this the sin of interracial uh, dating. I'm trying uh, to understand. Whites out, whites out your your. I'm trying to understand. Um, let me get it out. Let me get it out. Let me get it out. The Israelite, your Israelite blood starting here, gets gets whited out by uh, uh, white people. A, a man marries a white woman. All right. Let me show you. If a man marries a white woman, then their son is mulatto or mixed, we call it. And then if that man marries a quadroon, uh, marries a white woman, then there's this man's grandson is a quadroon. So this man marries a white woman. This man's great grandson is an octoroon. And then if this man marries a, a, a white woman, then uh, they have effectively whited out their DNA, their bloodline out of this, out of the system, out of their. What are you talking about right body. now? Exactly what I just said. Yeah, but I, what does it have to do with what I'm asking you? 
What? Okay, what did you ask me? You don't even know what the hell I'm asking you. You sit up there rambling for five minutes about the answer or something. You don't even know what I'm asking. What did you it's ask me, brother? It's an art to listening. <sighs> you don't even know what I asked you. <laughs> You're not going to tell me? Yeah, I'm going to tell you. What I, what I was trying to figure out is, once again, what is this criteria? And you're giving me two answers. You're giving me this whited out theory that um, I'm waiting for you to show how that's connected to REI's theory. Is he saying this? Did he come up with the white out theory? But then before that, you said that, well, you are what your father is. So is it the white out theory or is it you are what your father is? You're saying two things, brother. Oh, I'm not saying two things. Yeah, I'm, because I mean. I'm asking your question very uh, clearly, brother. If, if, if it's the father theory, then it doesn't matter what color they is, long as it's the seed of the father. But if it's the it white doesn't out, matter what color they are. Uh, because okay. an Israelite is not white. Which one is it? An uh, Israelite is not white, brother. Okay, so, so what I okay, is it the start off looking like this? So you're saying it, 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 comes from, it comes from the Bible, brother. Okay, so you're telling me two things. That's what I'm saying. Is it the seed of the father or is it the white it out theory? That's what I'm trying to figure it out. The way that we it comes all comes from the Bible, okay? The way that we keep track of our heritage is by the generations of our fathers, right? So if you continue to sin, it, according to Deuteronomy 5 and 9, thou shalt not bow down themselves and, and have the idols and iniquity of the fathers upon the children until the third and fourth generation is, is how it's reckoned, of them that hate me. So that means they're sinning. Neither shalt thou make them your daughter. Well, tribe chart for me. Okay. Yeah, put up the 12 child chart. So was that clear? You didn't even let me finish the answer. Was that clear? They, they both come from the Bible. So this is how we reckon that uh, these people are Israelites because they still have uh, lots of melanin in them. And they were originally Israelites like their great grandfathers and stuff are dark people. Yeah, can you pull up the uh, 12 tribe chart for me? <laughs> why you ain't, why you not saying that I answered that? I gotta confirm whether oh. I agree or not? No, you just say that uh, it was a clear answer. Or something. Yeah. Not You don't have to agree just yet until, you know. I still don't know what the hell you're talking about. The, 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 uh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm serious. If you want me to answer, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You're saying you're saying that um, is it a white is it a white at all theory? And you're saying that well, I'm saying that the I mean, Bible tells us genetically the first generation. If you have sex, it could be a black father. It could be a black father having sex with a white woman, and the child could come out light skin. Like light as that's correct. Yep, that's so, correct. Yeah, so so I'm just saying I'm not understanding this whole theory. Like you're saying that 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 chart that you had well, th that that's accurate hundred percent. So I'm not understanding that. I'm not understanding um how are you connecting that to um our the REI's chart. I'm not understanding that um you have this um criteria of the four generations and it's like you're taking apples and oranges and Mixing it up with some tropical punch Kool Aid right now. This is what I'm. This is what I'm hearing right now. Mm -hmm. So I want. I want you to be more clear. It's an art to listening, brother. Okay, so I, I, I just said everything that you you was trying to break down. So I listened. Uh, I just don't understand what how is you're connecting that to uh -huh. REI's chart, twelve tribe chart. That's what I'm saying. Because what I'm what I'm telling you is that um, there's a. You you know, start for me, brother. Oh man, why are you not allowing me to answer the question, brother? Because I want to hear this, I want to see the 12 trap chart. <sighs> it shouldn't take that long. I mean, the, the, it's, up there. It's, up, it's on the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see. We're, uh, okay. Okay. So 
the tribe of Judah, you're saying that they're African American. Right? Yes. Okay, so where are all these people coming from? The southern kingdom, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. These you see how they all dark races? Very dark because they they kept kept keep the laws better, even though we're all corrupt now. We keep the laws better, you know, better. So we stay dark. We don't we don't generally uh marry interracially. So the that's that's the important key that you're missing, that the interracial marriage causes the light skin on a mass scale of the other tribes. So um you're saying that uh the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Levi, and the tribe of Benjamin, where did they come from before they were here in the Americas? They came from Africa, and the northern kingdom came from Assyria, which is all the other tribes. Right. So, Levi came from Africa, Benjamin came from Africa, and Judah came from Africa. Yes. All right, so where did you get the classification um, that was being used by Mikhail Afro Latina? Afro Latina, I mean, he made it clear that Afro Latinas, he thinks that they are Judites. So they came from Africa, but then you have. I'm saying, what do you say? I'm saying that the uh, indigenous peoples have been here since seven, the 700s BC. They've, they've always been here since that time. That's a, that's a very long time that they lived in the Americas. So you're saying that the, 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 um, the people who are labeled as Afro-Latinas are under the classification of Ephraim? Yes. Okay. So not, not all of you can't you can't you can't generalize every single hundred percent of these people. They 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 they're mixed together with 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 the uh, southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Right. So, are you saying that the Afro Latinas are Judites mixed with Judah? Nah, the Afro Latinas. Some of them, some of them are uh, indigenous peoples who are the northern kingdom that came here a long time ago, and then some of them stayed in that area from the transatlantic slave trade. So they're not indigenous, and they're not called Indians. They're from the slave trade, so they landed over there in the slave trade. So they was brought over here too during the slave trade. Yeah, the yeah the Afro Latinas, the uh, Afro Latinas. So are they Jews some of them. or Benjamin or are they Levi? The majority of in, indigenous or Indian Latinas in Mexico and are everywhere else in the world, huh? We'll make it easy. We're talking about Ephraim. Yeah, Ephraim, Ephraim is strictly the Indians. The, but that says Puerto Rican right there. Right. So when you use the byword of Puerto Rican, that's that's where the, the confusion of the people come in. Because if if, if we're going to call everybody Puerto Ricans, which is a byword, that's not their original name. I got it. But but you have uh, Afro Latin. You have to look into the population in order yeah, to determine amongst the Puerto Rican race. Where did they come from? They came from uh, the tribe. Two. They came from two different locations. Where they, came, they come from their parents. So if you got uh, uh, say you got twenty people, it might be ten people might have. I mean, not might have, but you know what I'm saying. Were you asking me to? 
generalize. So they are mixed oh, together. You the 12 tribe chart, brother, not me. I'm just trying to get clarification. Huh? Yeah, well, okay. Well, I'm trying to tell you, and you keep cutting me off. So now. Afro Latinas, you're not answering the question. Huh? Where did the Afro Latinas come from? I told. I told I'm going to tell you again. Please tell me again. All right. So they come from both the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom. So they are originally dark people. So they mixed with different people to make them lighter. Oh, so they come from both the, the Northern and the Southern Kingdom. That's correct. Okay, so um, you're saying that they're mixed between the two. They're mixed with the uh the, the people from the northern of the oh man, you you gonna cut me off every time I try to speak, brother? Brother, you was quiet, brother. If they if they come I'm if not Ephraim quiet come from, at all. Right, all right, Nick's all that. Nick's all that. Is Ephraim from the northern or the southern kingdom? Kingdom. Both. All right. Ephraim uh, is from the northern and southern kingdom. You're saying that's what I've been saying the whole time. So now you got the stranger that is within them, which is the. Europeans came in and and amalgamated with them and made them their skin lighter. So if they have uh Spaniard fathers mixed with a, a indigenous mother, then their child is uh European according to Ariad's chart. But if they have a uh, indigenous father and a European mother, then that child is a uh, Israelite, according to Ariane's chart. Yeah. So, uh, tell me the tribes that are from the Northern Kingdom. Okay, you got Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, Naphtali, Reuben, Zebulon, Asher, Simeon, and Gad. And tell me the tribes that are from the Southern Kingdom. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. What tribe is Ephraim from? Ephraim is is the the name of the tribe. I mean, what, I mean, what what part is Ephraim from? Northern or southern? Northern and southern. <laughs> no, the Puerto the Puerto Ricans are northern and southern. Right. So I mean, so are. Judites and all types of other people. We mixed up together, but this this is a uh, uh, accurate and extremely accurate. Uh, right, you seem to be very confused, brother. I'm not confused at all. Yeah, because you just said two things. Uh huh. I listen very carefully. <laughs> I said, "Tell me the ones from the Northern Kingdom." You said Ephraim, Manasseh, and. And I said, name me the kings for the southern kingdom. He said, Judah, Benjamin, Levi. I said, what uh, tribe is Ephraim from? I mean, what what um, uh, place is Ephraim from? You said, both, northern, northern and southern. Is that not confusing the hell out of persons trying to get clarification? Yeah, that's why I'm trying to clarify okay. for you because you, you're you not listening. You're not listening. See, see okay. how you cut me off every time I try to answer your question? Brother, brother, bro, we heard your answer. You didn't, you didn't hear nothing. I'm brother, trying to answer you, this last question that you're saying. Brother, brother, I, you say, gonna, I see you're how you're stop. confused. You're, what you're going to stop doing is... I you see how you're confused. I'm trying to clarify for you. Answers, you're going to say, well, let me explain. I gave you time to explain. You're saying two things. Oh, you have it. Yes, you... Yo, once again, we'll do it again. We'll do it again, because you're going to give me some. I guarantee you, you're going to give me a different answer. <laughs> Name me yeah, right. the Northern Kingdom. Huh? Tell me the Northern Kingdom. The Northern Kingdom is Ephraim, Manasseh, Naphtali, Reuben, Issachar, Zebulon, Asher, Simeon, and Gad. Name and, me the Southern and, Kingdom. All right, and so what you're not getting is Name that. Name me the Southern Kingdom. The Southern, see? Name me the Southern Kingdom. If you don't allow me to answer fully, then it's just crazy, bro. Name me the Southern Kingdom. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay. Where does Ephraim come from? 
Ephraim is the name of the tribe. When they got to Puerto Rico, there were white the northern people. Northern or southern? Oh, my God. The northern kingdom, brother. Okay, I see exactly. You said they were both northern and southern. Then you said they were northern. Now you say they northern and southern. Now no, that's no, that's a lie. That's a lie. You, you said, said, you said that Ephraim was northern and southern. Yeah, Everybody mute, your mic. mute your mic, man. Th that's a lie. You said the Afro Latinas, not Ephraim. You said the oh, Afro Latinas. Wait, you, wait, brother, wait, wait. we do. This is what we do. You said, one, if you heard, claim. Say that oh Ephraim man, was See, northern you said and the Afro Latinas, brother. You said the Afro Latinas. I Ephraim. I said, where does Ephraim come? You said northern and southern. Press one if you heard him say Ephraim is northern and southern. Brother, you kept saying the Afro Latinas. So I was answering your Afro Latina Everybody question. The Afro Latinas are both the northern and the southern. Everybody's wrong, and you're right. That's what you're saying. No, uh, listen, brother. If you if you let me finish a full answer, you can hear it clearly. But if you say it clearly. Then I'm trying to say it clearly, but you keep cutting me off. Right, because you're not making any sense because you're saying two things. <sighs> how can yeah. I look? Just think about this. How can Stop I move talking on? so I can answer? How can I, how can I move on and not ask for clarity Do when you're allow me to I'm answer go and let you go and say two things? I'm you're gonna not be me to answer. You're not allowing me to answer. So your question was the Afro Latinas. You kept saying the Afro Latinas. So no, the Afro, I, yeah, I, don't I, even try it. Don't even try it, liar. The Afro Latinas are in Puerto Rico and all this. We're Afro, moving on. Afro we're, not, we're moving on since I'm a liar. Yeah, we're, you are lying because you said the Afro Latinas. I'm lying. You're right. Yeah, you kept saying the Afro Latinas. That's just one. Point. That's just one part of it. Thanks a lot, brother. Thanks a lot, brother. You're right. I'm a liar. Oh, so you're not gonna admit that you lied and you said Afro Latinas? Uh, yeah. 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 All right. Um, Mikael. What's going on, brother? Peace, my brother, man. My peace. I'm just being peaceful, man. All right. All right. Um, let's go to Let's go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 33. Yes, sir. Give me one minute. I should have just had the book open because I knew you was going there anyway. Okay. I'm here. All right. Uh, Jeremiah 50. Hold on a second. Oh, strap to open. Jeremiah 50, verse 33. Mm -hmm. um, it says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that and all that took them captives held them fast, they refused to let them go. All right, brother. Um, do you subscribe to um, certain aspects of the twelve tribe chart? Uh, no, because I, I already knew that uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi was in the West before I knew anything about twelve tribe charts. So no, no. Like as far as uh, Haiti being Levi and uh, Jamaica being Benjamin, no, I, no, no, I don't. Okay, so um, you believe that the um, so-called African Americans, the people of Haiti and the people in Jamaica are Israelites? Most definitely. Um, so do you know what tribe they come from? Uh, either Judah, Benjamin, or Levi. Can't say 100%. Um, that's why how, I brought how up. How would you know that? How would I know what? that they come from either judah benjamin or levi uh the same answer i gave him earlier we can go to isaiah the 11th chapter and uh i'm gonna go to isaiah 11 and i'm gonna pick it up at verse 11. 
it says, and it shall come to pass in that day, the Lord has set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush, which of course is Ethiopia, and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hymoth and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations that shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So as we see, he named uh, Israel, which a lot of them would be like uh, the 10 tribes. And then he also puts emphasis on Judah at the end. But with Judah, it's an added thing to it. He said they're scattered to the four corners of the earth. You can also find that in Deuteronomy 32 and 26. And if we go to, um, give me one second. If we can also go to, uh, just to help it, add a little mustard to it. Zephaniah, the third chapter. Zephaniah chapter three. And it reads, um, Zephaniah three and 10. And it says, um, oh, uh, 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 from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my my suppliance even the daughter of my dispersed shall bring my offer so when you put that together um in jeremiah chapter 50 where he say that judah and israel will basically be on the same land that's talking about africa and that's because we know we have the ibu tribe um you know tribes like uh the shanti tribe the falasha and all these tribes and you also have um, in South Africa, you got um, the Limba tribe, who we believe to be Levi. So it's still, so my point is, it's still some Judah left over there because they're scattered to the four corners of the earth. You see what I'm saying? So in order for them to get to the four corners, you can only get there with a boat. And we came over here in the transatlantic slave trade. All right, so uh, where's, e where's, where's Ephraim at today? Do you know? Uh, the, the major the majority of Ephraim is in Africa. Uh, so they're not the Puerto Ricans. Oh uh, no, it's Puerto Ricans that's Israelites, but they Judah. Oh, uh, they're Judah as well. Yeah, as far as the kingdom of Judah, yeah. So they either Judah, Benjamin, or Levi, because they so came over on both. Okay, so you're saying that one is in um Africa. One mm -hmm. tribe is in Africa and the other tribe is all the way over here in America. But it, it says in uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 50, uh, verse 33, it says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and the captives held fast. They refused to let them go. Right. And so that's, how, and how would they oppressed together if one is in Africa and one tribe is in uh, America? Well, if you look at the text, what it's telling you is we know that scriptures don't contradict scriptures. So if, if it's uh, Israelites scattered to the four corners, then they can't all be in the same land. So what it's talking about is 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 is, is pointing out an area where all 12 of them are at. And that is the continent of Africa. It's no different. Then what our brother is saying with the chart, he's saying it's the continent of the Americas, which would make up, which would comprise North America, Central America, South America, and even Canada. So it ain't saying, he ain't even saying it's all one little North American group. He's saying it's the continent. I'm saying it's the continent of Af uh, Africa, because for one, Africa is much larger. It can hold uh, 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 a vast majority of the 10 tribes or the nine tribes. And it can also hold some of the dis, uh, dispersed of Judah that didn't come over here. So it's quite simple to me there in Africa. Uh, so you're saying that these tribes, when it says, thus they are the Lord, um, children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, mm -hmm. that that is talking about Africa. For the most part, yeah, because they both on that same land together and they both got oppressed ever since they've been over there. And they wouldn't let them return to Israel. That's part of that same uh, scripture that you read too. All right. So, what would be the significance of acknowledging the transatlantic slave trade if that was the case? Because it also says in Isaiah eleven, what I just read, Isaiah chapter eleven. Uh, let me read it one more time. Isaiah chapter eleven, and you go down to. Uh, let me read it clear for you, bro. 
It says, verse 12, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah. So you hear that now? Listen, from the four corners of the earth, the envy of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off from Ephraim. Shall not uh, envy, uh, Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not, um, shall not, shall not vex Ephraim. I also want to read one more thing in here. Let me see. Uh, the first thing is for. Okay, and listen to this. Here's the dead giveaway that this can't be talking about the Americas. Listen to this, uh, Brother Solo. Verse 14, this is what's going to happen next. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab and the children of Ammon shall obey them. All you have to do is go look at a map and you'll see that Edom and Moab is right there by what you will call Jordan. That's where uh, Ammon and Moab is. And we know according to Ezekiel chapter 36 and Ezekiel chapter 35, the Edomites rule Jerusalem to this day. So how you gonna walk from a Af how you gonna walk from America across some water to go beat up on on the land of Moab and um and, and the land of Ammon when that's all the way over there in North Africa makes no sense. All right, so um, unless he could show me the land of Moab over here in America, the uh, you believe that the um, there are twelve tribes. Yes, sir. You believe that the Latinas? Oh, you said they were Afro. They were they were um of the tribe of Judah, Latinas, the Afro Latinas. Uh, not necessarily the tribe of Judah, but they from the kingdom of Judah, so they would be either Judah, Benjamin, or Levi okay. to be more specific. Okay, okay. So, um, what about uh the the um the Mexicans? What about them? The Afro Mex or the Gentile Mex? uh the afro mexican i'm talking about only only the uh when i'm when i'm asking questions about the mexicans i'm only speaking of the afro aspect of it so what are the, the the mexicans oh you say that all of them are from judah uh from the kingdom of judah yeah remember that's that's between three tribes yeah i go with uh what i read earlier deuteronomy 32 and 26. so so you're saying that the, the um the native americans that was here before columbus they were also from the tribe of Judah? No, I didn't say that. I didn't I say that was where they come from. Uh, well, you know, you got two different groups of uh Native Americans. Um, if you look at the ones that was around, uh, I believe that was around uh one thousand. I'm gonna say that was around was that around one thousand? Uh around what the around the time of Genghis Khan era. If you do the research around Genghis Khan area era you can clearly see and i'm not trying to offend anybody because I, I know people take this real personally but um just historically we know that Genghis khan empire was three times the size of uh, uh uh greece and twice the size of the roman empire so he he made it to the america and so those mongolians you see if you go look over in mongolia and then you go look and some of the early Native Americans, they look almost identical. That's because they're the same people. So they came over with him. You also have the black natives, black natives. And if you do research on things like the old Mac, who a lot of people seen the writings and said it was Hebrew, but it was actually ancient Phoenician. So a lot of those uh, uh, black so people that were Genghis Khan, they were not, um, they, they, are they Israel? No. All right, so the ones that was the Omex, they are Israel. Nope, I didn't say that either. Them was Hamites. Oh, so they was Hamites. So are yep. none of them are Israel. That's what you're saying. Well, to be you know, to be fair, to be honest, I can't say a hundred percent that no Israelites came over here. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to, you know, to make sense like I know everything. I can't say that no Israelites can. That's kind of unreal. Word. Right, for the most part. But I I, I I would say this, Sola, and for everybody listening, I do know about Solomon's fleets. So Solomon, Sol and, and let me just say this part to clarify so people can look it up. The reason I say that that ancient writing that they found was ancient Phoenician and not uh, uh, 
ancient Hebrew is because the Phoenicians were a naval people. And we know during the times of Solomon, he had fleets. And if you go look, the Phoenicians were some of the people that were naval people. So they would have came over here. So that's why how I say- you, how, how do you make the difference between like a Hamite? Were they Hamites in uh, West Africa before the transatlantic slave trade? Was it Hamites in West Africa before? I'm pretty sure they was there, yeah. I'm pretty right, sure. So that only, only the Hamites were, um, only the Israelites were taken and scattered or were they Hamites as well? I, be, I, I believe damn near hundred percent of the Israelites was taken. And I say that, uh, I know some people think that's unrealistic, but if you truly believe in prophecy and believe in scriptures, God don't, he not color struck. Like he not gonna not know who you are cause y'all look alike. Only humans do that. Um, if you look at like uh, the slave narratives of Aludo Equiano, which is a real slave narrative, he tells his story about how he got kidnapped and taken to Europe. And the first thing he said was, these other African tribes was not like my people. They were not circumcised. So meaning they had their stuff hanging out. You know, they didn't cover themselves like us. He said they were not circumcised and he said their women were not as modest as ours. Meaning they didn't cover their head and all that. So it was always this distinction between who the Israelite was and the Hamites. And it was mainly due to the customs over in Africa. So you're saying that all, all the all the African, all the people that was taken out of West Africa for the transatlantic slave trade were um, Israelites and not Hamites. Well, realistically speaking, I got to say it, at least the majority of vast majority. Yeah. All right. And, and you're, you're basing that off of cultural customs. Uh, and prophecy. Not just one alone, but I put them together. I use I use them together and I say I will have to come to that conclusion. So how how uh how are you making that conclusion when there's uh you know people in Brazil that had African customs and African traditions? Well, I mean a lot of the I mean we're gonna do that anyway. I'm I'm not saying it like um we would keep all of our Israelite uh customs, you know, uh that would kind of de defeat the purpose of us being lost, but they were like an identifying marker in certain cases. Um a lot of the African African customs that we call African actually are Hebraic customs. If you, if you, you know, look into them, like, uh, you know, the Ibu tribe was loaded with uh, a lot of Hebraic customs. If you look at the Yoruba tribe, they are prime example that they mixed Hebrew customs with African Hermetic customs. All right. So when you say mixed with African customs, are you suggesting that there was some type of um, integration between the African Hamites and the Israelites before the transatlantic slave trade? I wouldn't say there was an integration, but there was definitely contact. It had to be contact. I mean, we wasn't just isolated, you know, to that degree. Every, matter of fact, throughout all our history, that was our problem. We always ran into other nations and, and, and started to take up some of their ways and trying to mix it with our ways. And that's what got us in trouble. So you don't, you don't think that, that includes intermingling? Um, well, look, no, no, we, we, we've had to have some of their women, if that's what you ask, and they have some of our men at times. Yeah. But what I'm saying is my argument is the bulk, the majority of, uh, the Israelites in Africa for the most part stood out because of, uh, some of their ways and their customs. So understanding that you would have to admit that there are some Africans that did come over here then. That's why I said vast majority. So I, I would probably give it about a 90 percentish ray town uh, Israelite. Okay, so what about the other tribes of the um, northern kingdom? Where are they at now? Uh, I named them in Isaiah chapter 11. Uh, you know, and, and I, don't, I don't think they're just there. I think they're also in Asia and parts of India. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think a lot of times we focus on the transatlantic slave trade, but don't nobody talk about the sub-Saharan slave trade that happened with the Arabs before that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They was they was they was taking our people all up the uh, other way, and so I believe that the the bulk of the Northern Kingdom is in Africa. You got to think Africa is three times the size of the America. So you could fit America inside Africa three times. So that would support more of our tribes. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, brother.
We're going yes, to move forward to the voting. Um, who do you vote for? Is it uh, Mikael or claim your inheritance? Family. We're going to start out with the peers vote. You already know the process, family. Uh, you can call in now. This is peer votes, peers, 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 peers. Call in now or forever hold your speech. Let's get to the voting. Peers call in, peers call in, peers call in. Outside the queue. Peace, peace, peace. Who you vote for? Hey, peace, peace, man. I got to give it to the brother Mikhail. Claim is usually awful, but he was especially terrible tonight. And he's ordered to lying. And Ari, I never taught that. Ephraim is also Judah. So he lied about that. Game over. Congratulations, Mikhail. All right. All right. All right. Um, so uh critic uh he sends in his vote via text now if y'all want to text me uh make sure you claim uh you you post your name inside of the text so i can know that it's a member of the debate league because i got a new phone christopher harris what's good family hey yeah man i'm gonna go with um i'm gonna just go with mikhail on this one man i mean I'll go with Mikael, man, but attributing everything to being an Israelite just because you keep a certain custom, man, that's weak, man. We got to stop that argument, man. There's no basis behind that. Many African peoples were already keeping those customs way before Israel was even established. That being said, peace. All right, peace, peace. Y'all Rob, Ben Nazareth, peace family, who you vote for? Uh, I vote for, my vote goes to uh, Mikael. There's, uh, there's no science behind the 12 time chart, man. It, it's, it's a mythology, man. It, it's all mythos. Um, so I, I do my, 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 my uh, vote goes to Mikael. All right. Thanks a lot, family. Uh, outside the cube. I mean, outside the blue. Out the blue. I mean, he votes for Mikael. So we got four votes, four pair of votes for Mikael. We have zero for claim. Peace, peace. Is this Hebrew? Aboriginal? All right, Aboriginal Hebrew, who you vote for? Mikael, All right, thanks a lot. All right, peace. All right. I I I <laughs> Yeah man Let me go ahead and get all these out the way Yeah like if you're going to send me a text vote make sure you put your name inside of the text vote so I can know that you're a member of the debate league or would not be counted you have a new phone so um uh let me see yes as what i said earlier we're going to be rocking out all week uh we're going to have um not tomorrow but thursday we're going to have um gideon israel he's going to be going up against suave boss so make sure you be in the building family that'll be this thursday 9 p.m. Eastern time. And also, uh, we'll be capping off the second round um, with a debate between um, Brother Bishop Eliyahu and Outside the Cube. That'll be this Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, family. And that'll cap off the semi conference final rounds of Solar Vision Debate League. So, I'm telling you, man, these debates are getting real crazy and intense. And that's the way I like it. 
You know what I'm saying? Because whoever's going to win this thing is going to be. It's going to know that they earned that. You're going to earn it. You're going to earn this trophy. You know what I'm saying? This trophy is going to be earned. And either you want it or you don't. Simple as that. You want it or you don't. So if you want it, you got to fight for it. If you ain't willing to fight, that means you don't want it. And if you don't want it, that means you're going to get kicked out. Win or go home, family. You know what I mean? So we're going to sing another minute or two for the, for the peers' vote. And then we're going to move on in a second. I gotta give me some ginger ale, man. Gotta go give me some ginger ale. I got a strep throat, man. Yelling at you, Negroes. Be yelling at you, Negroes. Got me a strep throat. <laughs> nah, I don't think you get strep throat like that. Uh, we will be um, debating tomorrow. We'll we'll have um, Yahra Ben Nazareth. He's gonna be in the building. Going up against Yamra Yau. So make sure you be in the building for that family. I think I'm gonna put my uh I think I'm gonna put my hand mic, put my hand mic suit on right now. My hand mic hat on. My hand mic shirt. <laughs> I got my my hand mic <laughs> got my hand mic gear on right now. I'm all hand mic out, you know what I'm saying? Got the hand mic shirt and the hand mic hat. You know what I mean? <laughs> so who's gonna bring it home? Who's going to bring it home, family? Who's going to bring it home? Who's going to bring the title home? You know what I'm saying? Because not all y'all going to touch the title. Not everybody's going to touch the title. There's only going to be one other person that touched the title. Other than Solar Mind. Other than Solar Mind, it's going to be one other person that touched the title, man. Who is it going to be? We don't know. We don't know. That's why we're trying to find out. That's why we have the playoffs. So with that being said, we can now move to the people's vote. Let's get the people's vote. What do the people have to say? Who are you going to vote for? People, call in now or forever hold your speech. The number is 215-954-9091. Who do you vote for? Who do you vote for? Is it Brother Mikhail or is it Claim Your Heritage? Family, the people's vote is now in effect. Vote now or die. Peace, 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 peace. Say your name. Who you vote for? Peace, shalom. I'm voting for Mikael. It was a real good exchange, though, but he took it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot, brother. All right, peace. Okay, family. Y'all know the rules by now. Y'all know how Solar Vision do. Don't try to act like this thing is new. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wax Dog, Rich Mob, aka number one sniper in the building. That's the number. Call in now or forever hold your speech. The peers vote is now in effect, man.
I told y'all if y'all sitting in a text vote. If you're sitting in a text vote, put your name before within the text. Or it's not going to be counted. See, y'all, it's an art to listening. It's an art to listening. Peace, fam. State your name. Who you vote for? I'm voting for Mikael. That video alone just killed everything. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. We got to vote for Mikael. Let's go to the next caller. Peace, family. Who you vote for? State your name. Who you vote for? Yeah. You T-Bone. I'm going for claim your inheritance. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. So we got one vote for Claim. We got two votes for Mikael. We have a vote from Domo. We got a vote from Domo. He votes for Claim Your Inheritance. So that's a peer vote. Um, we have Peace, Peace, Peace Family. State your name, who you vote for? Okay. All right, all right. So we tied up at two with the people's vote. We are tied up at two for the people's vote. All right. So um G Con votes for Mikael. So that'd be two, four, six. Pair votes to one, uh, Mikael, and we're tied up at two with the people's votes. People, we got 99 people up in the building. Come on now, stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Peace, 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 peace. State your name. Who you vote for? Oh uh, yeah, Benny D. Uh, Mikael. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to support that GoFundMe too. You know what I mean? Hit that GoFundMe up. I don't think I got anything in the GoFundMe for the debaters. I mean, y'all listen to the debaters all year. Y'all don't want to support them for the championship? Peace, peace, peace. State your name. Who you vote for? Uh, this is uh, David and Judah. Shout out to both the Vaders. I got to All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Uh, we got four people's votes to two. Mikael. Yes, yes, yes. Family. Support that GoFundMe, man. Support the debaters, man. Y'all don't want to show no love to the debaters? Dang. Where's the love? Show some love. So Show some support to the debaters. They put their information together. It takes some time to put their information together, man. You can at least throw a couple of dollars in for the, the debaters. Peace, peace, peace. State your name. Who you vote for? Yo, this is Yoruba Ben. I'm going for Mike Kyle. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Thanks a lot. Peace, 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 family. State your name. Who you vote for? Hey, this is Antonio. I'm Domino's Pizza. I'm going for outside the claim. Shout out to you. I'm sorry, the kid, what up? So who you voting for, bro? Claim your inheritance. 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 Claim your
Same to her. Okay, thanks a lot, brother. So we got one, two, three, four, claim, and we got one, two, three, four, five for Mikael. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean. All right. Only the people of only only members of the debate league can and uh, send a vote via text message. Only members of the debate league. All right. So once again, we'll give this thing another minute or so before we move forward to the judges round. <laughs> Peace, 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 family. Say your name. Who you vote for? Hey, this is Brother Cash is Israel. I'm voting for Mikael. All right, all right. Thanks a lot, brother. So thus far, we have two, four, six votes for Mikael. Three votes for. Claim your inheritance. Peace, family. State your name. Who you vote for? What's that? All right, thanks a lot. We got four votes for claim. We got six votes for Brother Mikai L. Once again, family, if you're sitting in a text vote, you have to be a member of the debate league. And when you send in the text vote, Please state your name inside of the text. It is an art to listening. <sighs> Tell y'all guys. Tell y'all guys, man. You're just hard headed. You're hard headed. That's the problem. You just got a hard head. We'll give this a few more seconds before we move forward. Get this thing locked and loaded, signed and sealed. Shout out to Do The Knowledge Radio. If you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube page. Do The Knowledge Radio is a simple click. See what you do, right? It's the three dots right beside his name. You click on that, right? And then there's a go to channel right there. Boom. You go to the channel and you subscribe and hit the notification sign so you can be updated on when he does posts and live streams. Pace, 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 pace. Blah, blah. You know what I mean? I think I'm from the tribe of Benjamin, man. Just to be real with you, you know? All right, we got a wax dog vote. Wax dog. 
Wax Dog votes for Claim Your Inheritance. You got one, two, three, four, five, six to one, two, three, four, five. Five votes for Claim, six votes for Mikael. So, family, if you want to call in now and forever hold your speech, make sure you do so right away. We got 30 seconds before we move forward. I'm trying to find out the topic for that, the debate. Um... I'm going to do so. I got my I got my chalkboard up, but I haven't been using it lately. I need to get back to it. And I'm not, not a chalkboard, but it's a um it's a uh a poster board, a marker board, whatever you want to call it. Gotta start posting on that, make it a lot easier. You know what I'm saying? Alabama. Peace, family. Say your name. Who you vote for? I'm voting for Klein. All right. All right. So we got a tied ball game right now. We are tied. People's votes. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Claim your inheritance. He's always winning the people's vote. So we are now tied. Mikael want a pair boat. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> All right, let me stop tripping. Peace family. State your name. Who you vote for? I vote for Clay. Uh oh. Things is about to get interesting now, man. Please, please, please. State your name. Who you vote for? Zach, I vote for Clay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight votes for Clay. We got six votes for. <laughs> we got six votes for Mikael. I think we got a tie ball game, fellas. <laughs> piss, 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 piss. Station name, who you vote for? Chris Tango, I vote for Mikael. All right, all right. Two, four, six, seven. <laughs> six, seven votes to eight. Who is going to? Who is going to win this people's vote? Now we know that claim always win the people's vote. You know what I mean? So this is getting a little crazy now, man. This is getting a little crazy now. This is getting a little crazy now, family. <laughs> yeah, man. We're going to see who comes up. I'm going to wait. We're going to wait this one out. Y'all better call them relatives. Y'all better call them relatives right now. 
We're going to get down to the bottom of this. Eight to seven. Claim. Mikhail. No, we're going to rock out. We're going to give it about another 30 minutes before we move forward to the judges' votes. So, hey, it is what it is. Yeah, we got another vote, family. Who is it? Who do you vote for? Uh oh. Thanks a lot. I don't know. He's at nine. He's at nine votes. So every time when another vote comes in, I gotta reset the time. See, we're gonna find out. Who, this could be it. This could be it right here. All right, yeah, no, right, come on, come on, come on, guys. No unknown cause. Yeah, see, y'all, yeah, yeah, see, this, this is why I got a white man, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no unknown cause, man. Come on, man. Dang, y'all got to just do it right this time. Let's do it right this time, people. Dang, y'all always got to do some crazy stuff all the time. <laughs> you get crazy too much. Let's do it right this time. Peace, peace, peace. State your name. Who you vote for? I'm I'm me and I vote for I vote for claim. All right, so that is it, family. Claim has won the people's votes. Man, now it's time to get to the judges' votes. Yes, it's time to get to the judges' votes. I'm gonna have to grab the trophy when I'm done. You know what I'm saying? It's about to get real. It's about to get real right now. Got to grab the trophy now. Getting, getting real. So, through the knowledge, you can unmute your mic. Let the people who you know who you vote for and why. I'm shining the trophy. I'm going to shine the trophy. I'm setting up and I'm shining the trope. I'm shining the trophy. <laughs> you got the hand my hat on. <laughs> you are not messing with me today, man. Did you notice? Know hey, this is one that was a very tough one, and I ain't have a tough one in a minute. This one was very tough. Um, both of the debaters came to win, and they came to win with class. You know, that's a rarity nowadays since we see we see like the hunger and the passion in the playoff round. You see what I'm saying? So it's also, you know, edifying to see that, you know, two, two brothers can engage in a dialogue and, and not get messy. Yes, sir. Uh, but I have to go with Mikael in the soundness of the argument. And it was an early cut that I was hoping that Clay would find a way to patch up in regards to back to the same word when you talk about legitimacy. You know, legitimacy can't be couched in fraud. You know, so that and, you know, the debates were close. They was evenly matched. Both of them, like I said at the beginning, they both came in to win. And then when it came in the shuffle buck round, it fell apart for my brother Clay, man. And Mikael came in there like cool hand loop, man. So I'm going to have to go with Mikael. You know, shout out to both debaters, man. They fought hard. All right, all right. Uh, thanks for your vote, family. Um, the vote goes to Mikael, the judges' vote. So, uh, to, to one thus far, uh, School of Understanding also voted for Mikael, and I also voted for Mikael. Um, the reason why I voted for Mikael um, is because, you know, um, the, the, the topic of the debate is simple, you know, the legitimacy of the 12 tribes chart, according to REI. I mean, he laid down a solid premise. He showed that the, the elders 
um, said that, you know, this whole thing was made up and that kind of laid um, the foundation to his presentation. Laid the foundation to his presentation. He showed the discrepancies of the 12 tribes chart. He showed that there was, um, there's, um, how come the Africans and um, um, the Israelites in Africa aren't counted within the 12 tribe chart. He also made mention of uh, the Afro-Latinas. He, he showed biblical evidence to support that, um, that it was gonna be the tribes of Judah or the Judites um, that's gonna be scattered as opposed to the, um, um, the uh, Israelites of the Northern Kingdom. Uh, when I asked claim your inheritance to give me clarity, he was giving me different answers. It was getting very confusing to the point of frustration. Um, um, so my vote goes to Mikhail. Uh, shout out to both debaters. It was a very interesting debate. I learned a lot from both debaters. Let's go argue about this on the argument. Let's go. We're going to go to the argument league. Let's go to the argument league and argue about it, family. So with that being said, this is Soul of Mine, and this is the Solar Vision Debate League playoffs, man. <laughs>